Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my new course that is Linux Basics. So we are learning about the Linux Basics. That is nothing but the Linux operating system. We we'll learn it and the commands what we we'll do and the most commonly used commands which will be useful for us in order to develop an application or the, for the docker setup and all those things so i am trying to give you an overview of this linux basic commands so you learn a lot more of the linux basic commands how the operating system works the linux os and also the most commonly used commands and all those things we'll try to see it. so before proceeding on to this thing so first we'll try to have a basic history of this linux okay so the linux history so i will give you a brief history so i will not go too much deep into this one why because our concentration or the our focus is not more on the linux history so we need to learn of the basic commands the folder structure the file structure and how the linux works other than this windows operating system let's try to see this one so now all the people will be thinking that the linux was invented by linus trivalds he is a finnish uh, developer or the scientist whichever it may be so he has developed this all the people will be thinking that linux was developed by finnish person so but this one is not linux is not developed by the finnish person so linux kernel has been created by the linus trivers so linux means if you want to know the evolution of the linux so the linux has been came that's journey the thing is so it's more uh, what i guess is more not complicated it's very long so during in the 1980s or something like that 83 or something like that so we have a something like a gnu okay so gnu i actually don't know the full form of gnu let's try to see about this gnu right? because we will not gnu right so here you'll be able to see the gnu okay the gnu operating system and the free software management and this one is a gnu okay and what is the full form for this gnu gnu full form we'll try to use it we'll try to see it so gnu is not a unix gnu stands for gnu so not gnu gnu is not unix so something like that so now let's let's remove this one so the linux was developed by actually this gnu and you'll be able to see this is the logo you'll be having and now the gnu is a project so it came it came as a free software ma uh, what i can say is free software management something like that so now who announced this project is the gnu project the richard stallman here you'll be able to see that name also richard stallman has started this gnu project so what is the gnu project means right now the linux operating system which we are trying to see is nothing but a gnu project only so we will try to discuss about this one how the name linux has been came so normally we call it as a gnu if you try to search in the google the gnu you will be able to see it right gnu you will be able to see the gnu operating system the gnu operating system is nothing but the linux operating system only and this one is a free software movement so this is the movement which we got it in 1983 so richard stallman has announced this gnu project in september 1983 so the goal of this is to create a completely free and open unix like operating system at the time unix unix was the most popular project uh, operating system and the goal of richard stallman is richard stallman is to create completely free and open unix like operating system so stallway stallman was motivated by the desire to preserve the spirit of cooperation that was prevalent in the early days of computing where software was shared freely among the users at that time what the microsoft windows and all those things are these are all closed thing so now they what the richard stallman has thought was he thought that software should be shared across the users so in the computing world and all those things it should be shared across the users so that the users can have free of coding free freedom of speech something like freedom of coding like that used to have so that is one thing in 1985 so the foundation of the soft free software foundation has been came so to support the development of the free software stallman founded the free software foundation in 1985 see this fis fsf that is nothing but free software foundation provided a legal and organization framework for the gnu project 
and advocated for the software freedom. So this is the one thing. So this is how the GNU has been came. So that is nothing but GNU debugger, the GNU compiler, uh, collection, binary utilities. These all the things has been uh, developed in the operating system. But one critical component was missing. That is nothing but the kernel. So this is the one main thing it has been missing. The GNU, Emacs, text editor, everything has been came. But one critical component was missing. That is nothing but the Linux kernel. Okay, so this is the introduction of the Linux things, uh, uh, GNU project, which we got it. Okay, so now when we come to the Linux kernel, so this creation of the Linux kernel, so Linux Torvalds, so this uh, this is the spelling is wrong, Torvalds. Okay, so Linus Torvalds, a Finnish student, started working on his own kernel at the time in 1991, which he referred to as a Linux. So he was working on a kernel. And he referred to that one as a Linux. Okay, so in 1991, he announced the project uh, in August 1991. So he doesn't have a uh, internet uh, to be a professional or large scale. So just he 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 was uh, doing as a hobby project. So now in 1992, the Linux has become a free software. Initially, that was uh, released under the license that prohibited the commercial distribution. But however, in the 1992. So he, he has re-licensed re the Linux under the GNU, that is nothing but general public license. <clears throat> so now the convergence of the GNU and the Linux. 1992 onwards, the merging of the GNU and the Linux has been came. So with the Linux kernel, now the available and the GNU project having developed most of the other essential components of a complete operating system. The two, pro the two projects naturally converged Distribution began to emerge that combined the Linux kernel with GNU tools and software, creating a fully functional free operating system. So this Linux kernel combined with the GNU utilities and all those things. So it has developed the fully developed operating system, fully functional free operating system. So that is one thing. Now this is the this is the co combination, the collaboration between the GNU project and the Linux kernel developers demonstrated the power of open source development models and the global community. So that is one thing. <clears throat> and now I want to explain you about the Linux kernel. So this Linux kernel is the core concept, is the core of the Linux operating system. So that is one thing also you need to understand. It is a core of the Linux operating system. So it acts as the intermediary between the computer hardware and the applications running on it. So the core functions of this one is Linux kernel is the core function of this Linux kernel is one is process management okay and the memory management so here you can write it as in memory management and we'll be having something like file system management so these are all the things the device management so like this we'll be having everything the Linux kernel will be taking it. So it was developed in a modular design. So one of the key features of the Linux kernel is a modular design. This means that certain parts of the kernel such as the device drivers can be loaded or unloaded while the system is running. So the Linux kernel is developed collaboratively by contributors from around the world. The kernel is the foundation upon which Linux distributions build their systems, adding application software, libraries and tools. So that is the one thing about the Linux thing. So right, right now the Linux operating system is used in wide range of devices from servers to the smartphones. Android is based on the Linux kernel only, embedded systems, routers and supercomputers making it one of the most widely deployed kernels in the world. So that is that is the brief history of the Linux kernel thing. I don't want to go deeply into this process management and all those things. So this is the brief history of the Linux thing. So normally we call it as a GNU. This is a Linux, so going on, going on, it has been renamed, it has been named as a Linux thing. That is one thing. So now, before proceeding into this one, so I want to explain you about the three main concepts in the Linux. That is nothing but first one is the terminal, and another one is the shell, and the last one is the bash. So these two are the concepts which you need to understand very often. So first one is the Linux terminal. So this terminal is nothing but a software. Okay, it's a software which you it will provide. It's an input output environment that provides a user interface for accessing the shell. So this shell <coughs> is nothing but a soft program. Okay, 
which acts as a shell to the which acts as a shell means so the snail will have a shell right acts as a shell to the operating system so that means if you want to communicate with the operating system is then you can write it only with the shell coding and where you will write the shell coding is in the terminal so this terminal will you will be writing the shell coding and this terminal is a software and this terminal you will be able to access the shell program okay so that is one thing so the lyrics terminal is a program that opens just a window and allows you to interact with the shell so the terminal allows you to interact with the shell that is main thing terminals previously in world days used to be have a physical devices but now these are emulated by a software okay so examples are genome terminal console exterm many others are there so now you understood about the terminal so now let's try to see about the shell shell is a program that takes commands from the terminal so it will take the command from the terminal and gives them to the operating system so shell take is a program it's take that command from the terminal and give it to the operating system to perform in a nutshell it's a command line interpreter that provides a traditional user interface for the Li unix or the linux operating system the shell reads commands typed by the user and it executes them there are several shells available in the linux with its own set of features syntax and capabilities commonly shells programs that are available as bash g shell fish and many more are there so now you may be understood about the bash shell and the terminal now we will try to learn about the bash so bash means born again shell born means you have a born series right mad demons born series that born not born b o u r n e born identity this type of thing is one of the most popular and widely used shell so this bash shell is one of the most properly uh, widely used shell it is by it is the default shell on many linux distributions and on mac os also bash is an enhanced version of the born shell with the additional features such as command line editing unlimited size command history so many more will be there so how they work together in summary what i want to tell you is when you open a terminal application so when you open this terminal application it starts a shell session at uh, which we then waits for your commands if you are using bash means when you type a command into the terminal and press enter bash interprets and executes the command often resulting in the operating system to perform the same task the terminal displays any output from the command the cycle of input and output allows users to interact with the system run programs manipulate files and perform many other tasks so this is all about the difference between terminal shell and a bash terminal means it's a command line interpreter it is a it is a program or a window which will which will allow us to interact with the shell shell is nothing but a program or a software which interacts with the operating system so in order to make the task work and bash is one of the shell programs so i told you right shell is a program so we have so many shell programs like in that one bash is one shell program like this we have another shell programs like g shell i already told you right fish shell like that we don't we have so many things out of them bash is the most commonly used in all the linux distributions and also in the mac os <clears throat> so these are the three differences these are the three things which you need to understand the difference between terminal shell and also bash whenever i am trying to when i am trying to tell about this terminal shell and bash and i am and saying like that means then you need to have remember these all the things in your mind so this is all about the concept about the brief history of the linux in the next video we'll try to uh, we'll try to see how we can install the linux in our uh, operating system which you are having windows right now i am having windows if you are having already linux means so it's not a problem we'll be using the ubuntu software so we'll try to use it hope you understood about this basic thing if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela webdev so in this video we will learn about the linux operating system that is ubuntu so in this course or in this video series so we will be using the linux version that is ubuntu so now uh, we already discussed about the brief history of the linux right so we have different types of linux distributions actually if you try to see the kernel and all those things are one and the same only but we have different types of linux distributions so the popularity of this linux distributions can vary depending on the metrics used the surveys download and all those things we can do it so these are all the different types of linux distributions we will be having so many linux distributions we are having so out of this linux distributions we are having different types of uh, uh, linux operating systems 
out of this one the first one is the debian which is which we will be using more one so this is the linux distribution which we will be having so no it is known for its stability and also the basis of for the many other distributions including ubuntu so you will you are fam you you are familiar with this ubuntu thing so debian uh, linux distributions so this is a debian project in this debian project so you will be having so many operating systems like uh, mint so many things are there so i will try to explain you the examples so this is one debian thing and also here we will be having another one that is fedora so this is sponsored by red hat and fedora is known for its cutting edge features and is often the first to adopt the new technologies so it is a favorite to, uh, for all the developers and who work on the latest software ad advancements and another one is the centos so these are the different linux distributions which we will be having and it is widely used in server environments due to its strong stability and compatibility with the red hat enterprise linux that is rhel red hat enterprise linux so you, whenever you try to see this rhel means so that is a compatibility with the this one and open suse arc linux so like this we will be having so many things so these are the different types of uh, linux distributions which we will be having and in this distribution so we will be trying to use the debian so that is nothing but the ubuntu os so now let's try to learn about the ubuntu os so ubuntu is linux ubuntu is commonly called as an ubuntu and it is a free and open source operating system based on the debian a linux distribution that one i we already discussed we are we are having different types of linux distributions out of that one this one is a debian and if you want to know more about this debian and all those things means so you will be able to see in the internet also and here i let me open the chrome oh, sorry and when you search for ubuntu in the internet ubuntu so here you will be able to search it and here you will be able to see the ubuntu.com this is the website which you will be able to see it at the top enterprise open source and the linux so this one is the website if you try to see so this canonical means it's in company which are, which is supporting so ubuntu is a linux distribution that was created in 2004 by canonical limited and it, and it inherits much of its foundational structures from the debian including its package management system so that is called as an apt advanced package management so that is the thing so this is all about the debian thing in linux also so what is the use of this one is so it offers a user friendly interface and a stable operating environment with a strong focus on usability and ease of installation so it releases the new versions for every 6 months with each release receiving a free support for the 9 months that is nothing but lts version so you will be able to get it that one ubuntu os and the, this one is the ubuntu desktop which we will trying to see so normally we are having two types of thing one is ubuntu desktop and another one is an ubuntu server so if you want to know more if you want to know about the difference between these two so ubuntu desktop and the ubuntu server so ubuntu desktop means it will be the general purpose use for the uh, testing purpose or the for the developer for the home purpose we will be using the ubuntu desktop it provides the graphical user interface so that you can able to access it very easily and we also have an another one as i already told you that is nothing but an ubuntu server so this one is a scalable linux and you will be having only the command line interface so that you can access only through the command line you don't have a graphical user interface so that is the main difference between ubuntu uh, desktop and also ubuntu server so there is one thing which i want to tell you and now we need to install uh, so the primary difference between this ubuntu server and ubuntu desktop is so the purpose so now uh, ubuntu server is designed for hosting services and applications over a network and by default ubuntu server does not install a does not have a graphical user interface which we have told you and comes with a minimal set of packages focusing more on the server applications like like lamp stack file servers these all things lamp stack means linux apache mysql and uh, php so generally uses fewer resources like cpu ram than ubuntu desktop as it doesn't have any gui so we will try to see ubuntu server while while learning about the docker thing so right now we will discuss about the ubuntu desktop only why because primarily we are learning about the commands only so ubuntu desktop and all those things as already told you that so it's a general user for desktop or the laptop computers it is suitable for daily computing tasks development and multimedia and it includes the gnome desktop environment that the graphical user interface so that is gnome and it comes with the default packages so wide variety range of applications you will be able to have it so use more it we uses the more resources uh, resources compared to the ubuntu server because of the graphical user interface so now fine so which one we need to install so that is one thing you need to understand so you may be having doubt that so ubuntu server now we have learned about the ubuntu server 
ubuntu server and ubuntu desktop so now you may be having doubted which one we need to install so the choice between the ubuntu server and ubuntu desktop depends on your specific needs so if you are having planning for to set up a server to host the websites application database or other network services means then there is no need for us the graphql user interface right then you ubuntu server is the best practice so best choice for daily computing and the development if you need a system for general use software development or media tasks that benefits from the graphql interface means ubuntu desktop is the right option so it provides a rich set of features that you can use it for the desktop uh, regular desktop users including a comfortable ga for ease of use so i will show you that uh, ubuntu desktop also so now we have understood about the difference between ubuntu server and the ubuntu desktop now how to install the ubuntu desktop so there are different ways how we can install the windows so if you are having uh, directly the ubuntu desktop version means right uh, right now at the time of this recording the version it is running is 22.04 lts version so now there are different multiple options that are available to install the uh, ubuntu desktop in the windows system so normally if you have the in, uh, directly the linux ubuntu means it's okay fine if you are having mac means you can also uh, they, i will also tell you that which is available which we can do it both in the windows and also in the mac so now generally in the windows system so we are having different ways how we can use it first one is the dual booting so all the people you know at the time of this booting itself it will ask you that what is the os you want to select ubuntu or the windows so you can have it like this so just you can have a pen drive and you can uh, uh, using the rufus or something like that uh, you'll be having some image uh, software bootable it will convert that uh, usb drive to a bootable drive and you can use that one <coughs> and another one so the another option which you can run in the windows is the using the virtual machine that is nothing but we need to we will be installing the virtualization software or like your virtual box or vmware player or something like that so now right now we are using this option only virtual box so what is this one virtual box is so we can directly install the ubuntu so it will acts as an another software so which will run inside your windows os for this one what we need to do is first of all we need to install in, uh, download the virtual box so if you try to see virtual box it will be provided by the oracle so here oracle vm virtual box and directly you can download this virtual 7.0 so i have already installed it so after installing this one so you will be able to have this virtual box directly and if you click on this one so directly it will open uh, a thing and afterwards what we need to do is so we need to download the ubuntu desktop uh, image so the for that one what you can do it is so just you can directly go here and you can download ubuntu desktop image you can directly type like this and here you will be able to see download ubuntu desktop and directly if you click on this uh, desktop image iso image will be downloaded directly and you can have something like option uh, let's go to the virtual after downloading of this image so you can click on the new and it will ask you some series of questions and you can have a name something like ubuntu desktop or something like this and you can tell the iso image where it is located so here you can select other so that you can able to have the ubuntu desktop so you can give it and you can click on next 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 automatically the ubuntu desktop will be installed so this is how we will be installing this one so you can give the base memory whatever the memory and all those things you can give it and now after that one so automatically you can click on this one so that it will uh, so vm vmware will be powering up so that means a window will be open so for that one we are ubuntu desktop will be open let's try to see so let's uh, give it a try switch and here so it is trying to open so let it open so this is virtual box 1.0 and we are trying to open the ubuntu desktop so it is opening so let it open so it will take some time to open so here the ubuntu desktop has been opened so it will ask you the login username and password at the time of installation it will ask you to create the login username and password you can give the username and password so here i have given test user so that is the password is also test1234 you can give whatever you want so now it will try to open it open so it may take some time so it will the desktop will look something like this so this is the ubuntu desktop you will be able to see it so i am skipping this one all skip for now and okay fine and let's try to click on next post it yeah so now this is the ubuntu desktop so you will be having different types of scenarios firefox and all those things are available 
so now the first thing which we want to target is the mo most important thing is the terminal okay so this is the terminal so we have learned about the terminal right so this is the terminal which you will be having in the ubuntu so this is the terminal and for this one by default you will be having the bash shell uh, this one is a bash shell so now you will be having a ubuntu os and inside that one kernel will be there so outside the kernel you will be having the shell so shell will be interacting with the kernel and kernel will be interacting with the os hardware and all those things and now in the terminal you will be asking the thing so now if you want to know what is the shell you are having is dot dollar shell i think we can give it like this now you will be able to see that is a bin bash now here you can also tell echo dollar shell uh, you can have something like uh, dollar of zero so it will give you okay we need to give sorry so just like the javascript you need to give like this so here you will be able to see that is a bash so you can also have another uh, uh, another thing also something like uh, g shell or anything also you can have a g shell if i try to sorry g shell if i try to see command uh, come g shell is not found so if you want to install you can install it using apt install g shell it is telling so like this you can have different types of shells so right now by default in all the ubuntu softwares or any linux softwares bash shell will be provided so using the bash shell so using the bash shell commands we will be communicating with the kernel and the linux so this is all about how we will be installing the ubuntu uh, linux thing and the introduction of the ubuntu so if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela web dev in this video we will learn about the terminal so now in the ubuntu so this is our ubuntu right if you want to open the terminal in this one so how we can use it is so you can click on the below here the buttons and in this one you can search it for the terminal directly the terminal and the terminal will be open here so this is our terminal and if you want to increase the font size and all those things you can create a profile so that you can select that particular profile so now you will be able to have it so the font size and all those things if you want to change the font size and all those things you can go to the preferences and you can create a profile so in this profile you can increase the font size here so this is how we will be increasing the font size like this now here if you to click on select automatically the font size will be increased so now so this is our terminal thing now here this is uh, the bash shell i have shown you i have shown you that one right echo dollar of so zero means it will give you the uh, bash shell sorry it is echo right echo if you try to see see this is the bash so now the the name of the shell is the bash and now through the terminal we will be giving the commands so that it will interact with the kernel to do to to do the particular operations now here this terminal is called as an prompt the first command which i will try to tell you is the clear command which will clear the terminal everything so now the terminal will be everything will be cleared now here the prompt the concept of prompt in the ubuntu terminal or any unix like terminal refers to the short text displayed by the beginning of the command line here the short text you will be able to see it right at the beginning of the command line so this one is the prompt we call it as a prompt now here the common elements if you try to see here in the terminal prompt the first one is the test user this is a username and at the rate and you will be able to see the host name so that is not, nothing but the it displays the name of the machine or the computer you are currently working on so right now the name of the uh, machine or the host name the computer is nothing but the leela web dev so which i will be working on and the test user is the current user which i am trying to check it and here at the, at the afterwards you will be able to see the working directory that means indicates the current directory folder which you are in there so if you want to see here you can click on the pwd that is nothing but the present working directory you will be able to see that this is the present working directory now you will be able to see a dollar sign at the end of here so the dollar sign represents a regular user so the user which you are trying to uh, write the commands here it is called is a regular user and if you try to move to the sudo hyphen i means you will move to the uh, root super user so here now at this time you will be able to see the username is root and the host name or the computer name is or the machine name is leela webdo and you will be able to see a hash here instead of dollar you will be able to see a hash hash means it indicates the root or the administrative administrator user normally the regular thing if you try to see here dollar means it is a regular user so this is all about the command thing so now if you if you are able to see a symbol usually appears at the end of the prompt here if you are able to see 
indicating that the terminal is ready to accept the commands so this is what about the prompt is so this is the prompt so if you want to customize the prompt you can customize it so i don't want to go deeper into this one so in the g shell or something like that you'll be having a dot rc file so that you can change it or otherwise in the bash also you'll be having dot bash rc file so that you can customize your prompt and all those things so i don't want to go more into this one so just i want to explain you about this concept so that's it so now let's try to see about the commands how we can type the commands in the terminal we'll try to see some common commands how the regular commands will be so generally in a ubuntu or any linux machine so the syntax for the command will be something like if you try to see let's open the notepad here i will try to open the notepad don't think that this is a uh, windows so now generally the command will be in such a way that the command will write the write the command and the next one followed by the options so i am keeping here square brackets the options will be there and the second one you will be having a arguments okay so like this only generally the most of the commands will be like this only the first one will be the command and followed by and we may have the options or otherwise you may have the arguments so now first we'll try to see let's break down the each of each one of them and we'll try to see first one is the command so that is nothing but what i can say is this is the name of the command or the program you want to run it's usually a single word or abbreviation that represents a specific functional or utility so like let's say that ls ls is a command which lists the directory content cd cd is a command which changes the directory or grep or something like that grep is a command which search which searches the content for a particular text pattern so like this we will be having so many commands will be there so just i am trying to explain you and the next one which i am trying to explain you is the options thing so options sometimes called as flags or switches so whichever it may be so it modifies the behavior of the command so these are usually preceded by single hyphen so like this you will be having ls hyphen l so this is an option so basically options are preceded with a hyphen or otherwise double hyphen so that you will be giving a long long format so that is one thing so this is all about the uh, options and another one you will be having is an argument arguments are the targets of the command so this could be a file name directory name text strings or other data that the command will act upon so note that you need to understand that all the commands doesn't require uh, or not all commands doesn't uh, so all the commands doesn't require any arguments so some commands may require the arguments for example let's say that i will try to show you some uh, example commands for example let's say that ls is there so if you try to type ls so you will be able to see what are the list of all the files or the folders that are available in the current working directory now if you want to get more information about this one so now you will try to send an option so that means you are modifying the command so you are giving some additional information to the command ls hyphen l so here hyphen l is an option that modifies the command to display the directory contents in a long format so you are trying to tell in a long format now you will be able to see that the permissions that is having you will try to learn about these permissions and the user or the group which we are having and these are the, the date and all those things you will be able to see and the file name so this is how you will be having like this and we are having uh, certain certain commands also you will be having something like uh, i want to move to the cd slash means so you can move to the cd slash now if you want to check the present working directory that is in root directory and here if you try to see the ls hyphen l now you will be able to see another thing so like this you can able to see oh sorry we want we went to the exit right so let's try to move to the terminal again yeah now let's move on to the another profile that is nothing but leela so that we can able to see big one yeah so that is one thing so now we have also an another type of command i will try to show you the cal command so the cal command displays you the particular calendar of that one so right now we are on march 2024 at the time of recording so here this is the uh, this is the calendar which we are able to see so if you don't have a calen calendar or anything means so you can use something like apt hyphen get install cal so that uh, the command will uh, so that the calendar will be installed so if you want to get a particular month of this one means okay you can have calendar 12 2021 so here we are sending the arguments so 12 is the december and 2021 is the year so here you'll be able to see this december 2021 has been displayed so like this if you want to display the calendar for the entire year means so then also you can display so you can have calendar 2021 means it will display entire calendar of that specific specific year it will try to show you so like this you will be having so many things like uh, so i can have something like cal hyphen 3 then it will show you the three things that is nothing but the current the previous and also the 
next date next calendar it will try to show you so now these are the different types so not only this one so we have also another type of command that is nothing but another type of thing n cal new calendar now here it will display you display the calendar in a vertical position so this is how you will be able to see vertical position not only like this if you want to display calendar in julian means you can also display it so now you'll be able to see 61 62 like this so that means it will start from the january 1 2 3 4 so it will go on like this 365 days it will go so like this it's a julian calendar so if you want to so right, right now uh, always the calendar will be starting from the sunday if you want to start it from the monday means you can use it like hyphen m now the calendar will start from the monday that depends so if you want to display so here the current date is has been highlighted if you don't want this highlight means then you can use hyphen h then you will be able to see that the calendar will not be highlighted so like this there will be different types of options and the arguments which will be available in the calendar so these are the simple examples or the commands which I, which I want to try to show you and also the bash command and also the prompt how it will be looking so hope you understood about these basic commands so if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela webdev so in this video we will learn about the man command and its synopsis in the linux for example whenever you are trying to type any command we don't know about the options or the arguments whatever the things you are having so if you want to know whatever the whatever the options that are available for this command means normally what you will try to do so you will type man ls and here at the first uh, first place you will be able to see the man the name ls means it's a list of directory contents and the second one you will be able to see the synopsis so you will come to the synopsis once and if you come down by pressing the arrow button or the spacebar button also you can use it so by pressing the spacebar button so here these are all the options that are available hyphen a hyphen capital a so these are all the different types of options that are available for this command and at the bottom if you try to see you will be able to see some of the arguments or anything so here you are having only the things and now if you want to exit the uh, this manual so here you can click on this one so this is the manual so not only for this one so here you can have whatever the commands you want you can check the manual for this one so the name for this one is grep e grep f grep r grep print lines that match the patterns and here you'll be able to see the synopsis and at the bottom you are having the description and here you'll be able to see the different options so here you'll be able to see the options that are available for this one and if you come down still come down come down so like this you'll be able to have so this is the general output control so these are all different types you'll be able to have so like this you'll be able to these are all the things which you will be able to see okay so this is all the manual so this is something like a manual that is available in the linux so this is the common thing i almost in all the things you'll be able to see so this man command in the unix based operating system such as linux and mac os anything is a command line utility used to display the manual pages actually this is called as in manual pages of other commands and the programs it provides the user with a detailed description of the command usage including the options syntax and sometimes examples also it will give you the name the name man comes from the manual so that is the thing which i want to tell you now so fine so by pressing q the manual will be exited so now what i want to explain you is the one of the important concept which i want to explain you is the when i type man ls you will be able to see one option that is nothing but synopsis and in this synopsis you will be able to see ls space option and all those things you will be able to see and not only this one so for example uh, let's click on q and if you see man n cal if i try to press n cal and here you'll be able to see a lot of synopsis right so cal minus 3 h z y hyphen a number hyphen b number month year so like this you'll be able to see the different types of cals you are able to see so i want to explain you about the synopsis of this one so normally the command I already told you, right? So let's go onto the notepad so that we can have a clear understanding. And if we go into the notepad here, so I told you that normally the command will be command and the options. Okay. And here the square bracket indicates the optional thing. So you can mention and you cannot, uh, you cannot mention. So here arguments. So these are the two things which you need to understand. So the command, you know, the options means nothing but the options like a single word it is single letter it will be 
and with a preceding a single hyphen and the arguments so you will be having so now this care packets if you are trying to do it is it's then these are totally optional now for example let's say that uh, i will clear it out this one all and here i will try to do man echo okay sorry man echo why i am doing x uh, man echo okay now if you try to see here the synopsis of this one is echo and square bracket is there which is a short option and dot 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 is there we'll try to understand about this dot dot also and the string is there so that means here the completely all the things are optional why because the square bracket is there means so these are all optional so now and here you'll be able to see that echo a long option is there without a square bracket okay so that means this is a mandatory and here we can we can ask we can have it like this or we can have it like this also now for based on this one so we know that echo and optional is there if you press enter nothing is there so we can get an error empty and here i can do and i can type whatever you want so this will be displayed so this is the basic thing and here first of all we have understood about the square brackets in this one in the synopsis the square brackets anything inside the square brackets is an optional okay you may or may not need to use these options or the arguments for the command to work and the next one which you will be having is an angular angle brackets okay so you will be able to see some of, i will show you the examples also so this indicates that these are required arguments if you don't have this angle bracket also those are required arguments sometimes you may be able to have angle brackets or sometimes you don't have an angle brackets so then it is called as an required arguments you must provide a value for these arguments for the command to execute properly and the next one is an ellipsis so here you will be able to see ellipsis that is nothing but three dots so we have seen these three dots this indicates that the preceding item or the which which the preceding item has in, is having the dot 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 is to be repeated so you can also repeat those uh, those commands or options for example if you see an option followed by an ellipsis means that means you can use that option multiple times and the another one which you will be able to see is a vertical bar okay like play like this one okay and this character indicates that it used to be used as a separate choices so something like you will be able to have h or s or p like a enum so you you can use only these three options so h or s or p out of these options only you can choose only one option from the list provided so that is one thing so i will try to show you some example of this uh, synopsis uh, synopsis so where you can able to understand okay so the first one which i want to tell you is the uh, so first one is the ellipsis thing right so if you try to see here let me clear it out so man ls so here if you try to use man ls and here you are having an ls square bracket is an option and you are having dot 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 means these options can be repeated so you can use as many options you want you can repeat it and a file and dot 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 means you can mention the file name multiple file names also you can repeat this argument also so the like this you will be having and now here in this one which i want to tell you is the option dot dot and this one right so ls you know that it re represents the list the content and uh, ls hyphen l and all those things so you can able to know it so zero or more options you can use it and you can also list the zero or more files also use it if no file is specified also ls list the all the contents in the current directory so this is one thing and i want to show you about the angle brackets also let's see the angle brackets can we can able to see it or not mkdir yeah here we are. yeah here uh, this is directory so here you will be able to see that it doesn't have any square bracket so that means must and should you need to mention this directory and you can also mention the multiple directories also but this one angle bracket is not there so if it is not there also so i told you right angle bracket or if without angle bracket is a required field so here you can think that indicates required field so directory is required but you can specify more than one also dot 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 is there and the options is an optional field but you can specify more than once so that is one thing and uh, another one we have seen about the ellipses also so i don't want to go into this ellipses so the only thing which is left is the vertical bar so the vertical bar if i try to tell you about this vertical bar means so we will be having one option that is nothing but a cron tab or anything we can have it so i will try to show you that one also man cron tab okay we will try to learn about these all the commands 
and here you will be able to see hyphen e hyphen l or hyphen r and the square brackets is indicating that it is a required field and also you need to mention any of this argument so any of this option you need to mention and here hyphen u user so this is an op optional thing and you need to provide hyphen u means you need to provide the option for this one okay so hyphen u user means specifies the user's contact that to be manipulated without this option the current user contact is assumed this option is typically used only by the super user and hyphen i these are all the things is an optional thing and these are the this is also a required field but you need to use any of the option in this one so these are the different types of uh, uh, synopsis or the syntaxes available in the synopsis so just i want to explain you about this one so whenever you are trying to understand the manual of this command so by seeing this synopsis you can able to understand it very easily hope you understood about the synopsis and the manual in the linux commands uh, if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela web dev in this video we will learn about the navigation process in the linux operating system the navigation process means what i want to tell you is about the uh, about the directory structure how the linux directory structure uh, implemented in the normal unix like operating system let's try to see so here what i want to do is so linux os have a secure multi user file system so its directory structure is organized to maintain a good balance between security and the functionality directories directories accessible to the user are separated from the directory directories needed by the administrator so first the topmost thing which i want to tell you is the root directory so if you try to see here in our uh, operating system so if i try to open the paint in our uh, thing so the linux operating system unless from the windows uh, or anything the windows thing so it will have one root directory so this is denoted by slash so this one is called as a root directory so this is the starting point for the entire linux operating system so this is the starting point for the entire linux file system hierarchical tree it is a topmost directory from which all other file systems are mounted at system boot up all files and folders will branch from the root directory even if the data is stored in different places physically so this one is the root one and after this root only all the folders or the files or all those things will be rooted here so the root directory is owned by the root root user admin and its permissions are tightly controlled to allow administrators to add remove or modify the files and folders in this directory so in this one so how we can see this one in our linux thing i will try to show you so generally if you try to open any folder structure or anything so directly if you open any folder structure here like this then you will go to a home so you will not go to the root directory so this is not the root directory this is the home directory i will try to explain you about this home directory also so this one is the home directory so we cannot go to the root directory so normally if you want to go to the root directory means in the terminal i will try to show you how we can go to the root directory so there is no need to worry about the command or all those things so just i will try to show you how we can go to the root directory and here let's take our profile lila profile and in this one xdg hyphen open and i will give slash so slash is the shorthand notation for the root directory open slash and this one will open the graphical interface so here this is the <coughs> root directory and in this root directory you will be able to see lot more folders are available in this one bin boot cd rom dev etc home lib like this so some of things only i know about this one so just i will try to explain you about the brief overview of these things so the first one which you will be able to see is the uh, root thing you understood about this one right so this one is denoted by a single slash and it is the root directory think of this one as the base of the branching tree so this one is the base root and everything in the linux lives under it under it even if you have multiple partitions they will appear as another folder under the slash directory so that is a one thing and the and the second one which you are able to see it is a slash bin directory so this one right so this bin directory contains which are considered to be essential commands available to both the system administrator as well as the non privileged users it contains uh, shells like bash and common user commands like cp move rm cat ls like this 
it also contains programs which boot scripts may depend on other non critical user commands are stored in user slash bin so like this you will be having and now the another one which i want to tell you is the boot so this boot directory contains everything required for the boot process to fire up the system so this is the boot directory and the next one is the cd rom cd rom is directly is a bit of a legacy thing uh, that you will find on ubuntu so this is where you will find files on cd inserted on your computer like this slash dev directory you will be able to see it it contains a load of special files that represent access to the point to devices on your system this allows users to directly access these devices through the device files and you will be able to see slash etc it typically contains system wide configuration files which are local files used to control the operation of a program and you will be able to see home directory so this is the main thing which contains sub directory and here you will be able to see the test user which is the current logged in user and this is the place where you will be mostly working on this one so this home directory contains sub directories each one one for each regular user right now we have only one user so that is the reason test user is the only thing if any new user has been created means you will get an another folder and you will be able to see a home symbol on this folder why because this is the currently logged in user so that is one thing and apart from this one, you will be able to see lib lib32 lib64 these all things are present so i don't want to go too much into this one so these are the different types of folders which you will be able to see what i want to tell you is overall this one is the root directory okay so this one is the root directory some of the files you will be able to see there is an into mark okay so that mark is nothing but that means we don't have any access to this one so if i click on this one it, it, it will tell you that authentication is required only administrator can able to access this so this is the root thing so which you will be which you most of the time you will not be working so this is the home folder which you will be working and if you open this home folder test user and here you will be able to see a desktop documents downloads music pictures so these all the folders are, are available in this one so what is this one is for each user so tomorrow if you are having any other user like lila web domains then another folder will be created here so again that folder you will be having again these all the uh, desktop and all those things so that user also will contain these all the things so that is one thing so windows and linux are quite different in design if you try to observe here are some key differences which i want to tell you in contrast to windows single user system linux has a multi user design while windows uses separate data drives like c and d something like that linux uses a tree like hierarchy structure with everything branching off to the root that is nothing but slash is the main root on windows program and system files are saved in the same path like c program files and the application files are kept in c program files slash application in linux the program system and application files are all separated like slash bin slash boot slash user slash bin like that so that is one thing which i want to explain you in conclusion which i want to tell you is the linux file system is it so different from other linux uh, other file systems we are used to so these are the key differences which i want to make uh, the line which it will make the linux file system unique as you navigate with your own linux environment you will naturally gain more experience with what each directory is and its purposes are so that is one thing which i want to tell you and now here for example let's say that uh, the shorthand notation for this uh, xdg hyphen open your home directory means then you need to have a tilde tilde or a shorthand notation okay now when you try to open this one so you will be able to open the current working user so this is what this one is a current working user you will be able to see now if i try to close this one and now here you will be able to see tilde icon so then yeah here you will be able to see that home icon you will be able to open so this is how actually the slash means it is an uh, root path so using this root path only all the files will be located and this is the tilde means this is then home path that this, this is the way the current logged in user and all those things the files and all those things will be saved so this is the general overview of the linux uh, directory file structure hope you understood about this concept so if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela web dev in this video we will learn about the another command in the linux that is a common command that is pwd so what is this pwd command 
the pwd command in the linux stands for print working directory so if you try to type here pwd so this is called the full form for this one is called as a print working directory it is used to display the current working directory which is the directory that you are currently is in the within the file system so normally when you open a terminal or command line interface in the linux you start in a specific directory that will be a normally usually it will be a your home directory okay so that is normally will be a home directory so right now you will be able to see a tilde icon it is there so that means that is our home directory we are currently right now we are in the home directory so why because as i already told you in our previous video so the normally the in the linux or the unix type operating systems so one root directory will be there which is generated by the slash and under this uh, root directory all the folders will be resided whereas in the windows it is a different thing so it it follows the hierarchical tree like folder structure so here normally when you open a terminal automatically it will go to the home directory that is nothing but the current logged in home directory which you are right now so as you navigate through the file system using commands like cd the pwd command can be used can be used to check your current location in the directory hierarchy so now i will try to show you here is how the actually the pwd command works so you can open a terminal or command line interface in the linux then you can type just pwd and press the enter key the command will be executed and the result will be displayed on the screen so right now i am you will be able to see that is nothing but home slash test user so i will try to minimize this one the output of the pwd command will be an absolute path of the current working directory an absolute path is the complete path starting from the root directory here this is the absolute path if you try to see here it is home slash test user so example for example if you are currently in the home test test user means so here the pwd will display something like home slash home slash test, test user as the output <coughs> so this is how we will be uh, using this pwd current uh, if you want to know about this one so for example let's say that i went into a home uh, let's say that uh, we are in another directory okay so i went to the home user so now if you want to know which directory i am in means so you can use it like this pwd and if you go to cd home means we'll try to learn about this cd also so pwd means then i will try to tell you that you are in the home so this is how the pwd command will be used so this is the most common command which we will be using in the like, unix environment so why we will be using this command is in order to know at which directory location so the user is currently in and apart from this one so we will learn about the another important command in the unix type operating systems or in the linux so that is nothing but ls command so what is this ls command so this ls command utility list the un utility list the information about the files in the current directory by default this information includes the size, creation date, permissions, owner and group associated with the files and the directories. The ls command sorts the output in alphabetical order by name also. So now we will try to learn everything about this ls command with some examples. I will try to show you. This ls is a simple and powerful command when working with a large amount of data or the files, especially when processing files based on the specific dates. So first the command which I want to show you is the ls command so before proceeding into this one so if you try to see the manual for the pwd means so you can type it like this mn pwd and here you will be able to see this all the code okay so right this uh, pwd command doesn't have any options for this one so that is about this one so now we are learning about the ls command right so the common the first word is the ls so when you try to type ls or otherwise let's move on to the test user okay so when you type ls it will give you the all the files that are available for files or the directories that are available in that particular directory so right now we are trying to check in the home slash if you type pwd so these are all the files desktop downloads pictures and these are all the files that are available in the home slash test user when we type ls command without any arguments it lists the files or the directories in the current directory without giving any, any information about the files so right directly it is giving you the file name or the directory name in the output now you can see all the files and the directories present in our current directory 
So here also you can see different types of colors also you'll be able to see. So blue color actually represents the directories. White color normally if you try to see it will represent the text files and purple color you will be having some purple colors, purple colors. So that will represent the images. So fine. So now we have learned about the basic thing about this ls command. So ls command what it will try to do it will try to list all the files and the directories present in the current working directory. Now if I want to list all the directory contents and all those things means so ls command with an hyphen a argument lists everything in the current directory including the hidden files and directories also. So when you want to see the hidden files use ls with an hyphen a argument. So that means ls hyphen a then it will list you all the files and the directories and also the hidden files also will be shown. So if you try to press ls hyphen a. So hidden files is normally if you try to see dot which whichever the files starting with the dot normally those files are called as in hidden files. So here you'll be able to see bash rc, cache, config, dot gnupg. So these are all the hidden files and the directories. So if you want to see those directories and all the things means then you need to type the command ls with an argument of hyphen a. So this is one thing. And the dot symbol if you if you try to see at the start of the files or directory represents the hidden files and the directories. And if you look at the output in the above screenshot, you can see dot and dot dot at the beginning. The single dot represents the current directory. The double dot represents symbol represents the previous directory that is one level up to the current directory. Okay. So the current directory and the one level up to the current directory. Now, for example, I told you, right? So the dot represents the current directory and dot dot represents the previous directory means then if you want to check the list of files in the previous directory means then directly you can type dot dot. Now it will give you the uh, list that are available in the home. So right now the present working directory is home slash test user. If you try to type ls hyphen a it is giving you the list of files that are available in the home slash test user. So in the same scenario if you try to type ls hyphen space dot dot means it will try to give you the files of the previous directory. So that means it will be slash home only in the slash home you will be able to see that only one uh, user is there that two currently logged in user test user so that is the reason we are able to see only one file. So this is one thing which you want which I want to explain you. And the another one which I want to explain you is the important thing that is hyphen l command. So the ls hyphen l command lists the files and the directories in a long listing format. The hyphen l argument to ls command shows all the information like permissions, owner, group, size, creation date and name of the files and the directories also. So if I try to type ls hyphen l, so now you will be able to see all the information about this one. So here you will be able to see, so permissions, what are the permissions we are having, we will learn about these permissions also. So read, write, execute, these all permissions we will try to see, owner, group and also these all things. So here you'll be able to see the group and the username and here you'll be able to see uh, this one. So that is nothing but the size and creation date and also the name of the files and the directories. So like this you'll be able to see. So this is also one command hyphen L command. Now for example let's say that if you want to read this one in a human readable format means so LH, ls command has an hyphen H argument for that one. When given the with hyphen L argument or hyphen S argument shows the output in a human readable format. The human readable format means it gives you the information of the files or directory sizes in the kilobyte, megabytes, gigabytes like that etc. So here it is showing 4096 like that right. If I try to use a combination with hyphen h means then it is giving you that is it is around 4 kb. So like this you will be able to get it in human readable format. So this is hyphen h. Okay. So not only like this so you can also check so what are the files available in the root path? So you can uh, directly give the path what are the files present LH and you can use slash home means it will give you directly like this. So like this also to list the contents of the specific directory also you can type the directory name in the current directory otherwise use the full path of the directory after the ls command it will directly give you all the details. So this is also one way how you can use it. And apart from this one you also have an another one that is nothing but hyphen or option. So hyphen or option if you try to give it will give you all the recursively all the file contents that are available. So here you will be able to see so what are the what is the directory and inside the directory what are the files available. 
so it will try to give you recursively hyphen or command so this is also one thing which you want to understand so normally if you try to see uh, the ls command will list you all the files or the directories in an ascending order if you want to uh, display all the files in a descending order means then you can use hyphen or then it will give you all the files in a descending order see videos v is a bigger word right so that is the reason it is coming descending order so this is you can also use in the combination with an other arguments also hyphen lr means it will give you in a long listing format with the descending order so that is also one thing so these are all some of the uh, helpful options that are available in the ls thing so if you want to learn more about this one means so you can just go to the man command so which is available and you can type ls so that you can able to see hyphen a option which we have learned it and hyphen b so these are all the different types of options which are available so if you want you can use these options so just i have explained you what are the most common com arguments which i will be using more often so these things are the things hope you understood about this concept so if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela webdev so we are learning some of the unix or the linux commands that are available so we have learned about the ls command which will give you the list of all the directories and the folders so and also we have learned about the home path and all those things we have learned it now it's time for us to learn some more thing so for example let's say that uh, whenever i try to open a terminal i will close this terminal and if you try to open the terminal and here you can see open in terminal and whenever i try to open this terminal and i will go back to the profile so that you can see bigger one yeah so whenever i try to open this terminal see here from where you are trying to open the terminal so there the path the current present working directory will be the present working directory will be there so now right now the user logged in user is test user and these all the logged in users or the list of users are present in the home directory and you will be having a separate directory that is nothing but test user in that one we are in the desktop so now if i try to do the ls command so right now it is showing you some there is there is one directory that is animals directory so that means this directory is present in the desktop so if you if you minimize here and you will be able to see that animals directory is present here at the right at the at the right bottom corner you will be able to see so in the same scenario in the same scenario so we are able to see all the directories so that means the ls command will give you the list of all the files or the folders or directories in the present working directory so if i want to check the present of the file folders or things in the root directory means then what i need to do ls i need to mention the path so directly you will get all the folders or directories that are present in the root path so here the present working directory we are not changing it anywhere but we are providing an argument to that one to which path we need to get the folders details so now okay fine the present working directory is present in slash home slash test users now if i want to move uh, for example let's say that if i press ls in animals is there so i want to check i want to go into the animals directory so that means the present working directory should be in the animals directory so if i want to move vice versa in the animals directory means uh, in the directory means so what i need to do is so we need to use the command cd cd means change directory so here we are trying to change the present working directory so here you will be asking uh, you will be telling giving the path so here i want to move to the animals so here directly you can give animals here so now here you will be able to see the path has been mentioned here the present working directory right now we are present in the desktop slash animals so that means home test user desktop slash animals so in this way you can move to the present working directory for example if i try to press ls so here you'll be able to see another folder is present that is docs folder so like this you'll be able to see and if you want to check all the files means then you can press ls a and here we can able to see one two extra folders we are able to see there is nothing but one is single dot and another one we are having is a double dots so what is the meaning of this one is so in any directory these two things will be present so single di single dot means it will mention you the present working directory so that is nothing but ls dot means it will give you the same thing only but if you try to check ls dot dot 
then it will give you the previous uh, the parent directory of this one so that the parent directory of this animals is the uh, the, <coughs> the animals is the animals only right so the desktop uh, the pre the pre the parent directory of this animals is desktop so that is the reason so it is trying to give you the all the folder structure in the desktop so in the desktop it is present animals so this is nothing but the previous working directory or the parent directory and this one is the current working directory and these are all the folders which is present so this is also now here if you want to move to the parent directory of the previous directory means just you can directly type cd dot dot then it will go to the desktop so if you want to move again means you can press dot dot so it will go to the home directory if you try to see the present working directory here then it has moved to the home test is user so if you go on like this means then it will go to the home so here if you do pwd then home if you do again dot dot means it will go to the slash slash means it here it will be root directory so like this you can move it not only like this one you can also mention the path also you can mention it that's not a problem we'll discuss about the path so this is all about the change directory so cd means change directory if you want to navigate from one path to another path the present working directory, the current working directory means then you can use this cd command so this is about the cd command so before proceeding about this one so i want to explain you about the relative and the absolute path so this is one main thing which you need to understand when working with the files and directories in a file system you may come across the concepts of relative and the absolute path proper usage of these paths can help you efficiently organize and reference files and directories now we will explore some life uh, examples and all the detailed explanation about the relative and absolute path first one is an absolute path an absolute path fully specifies the location of a file or a directory in the file system starting from the root directory so that is one thing okay so when we can use this one is if you are working with the files or directory located in a fixed position in the file system an absolute path can be very much useful it provides an exact reference to the location of the file or directory for example let's say that we are in the here right so let's say that uh, i went into the home home file okay so if i try to check here so now now let's say that i am in the desktop so this one is the thing now here i want to go to the animals inside the docs folder so that means i can go something like cd animals slash docs i can you like this now if i press enter i can easily go to the animals desktop so here you are telling that i want to move into a directory in such way that animal slash docs i want to move into this directory so this one is relative to the desktop so for example let's say that i went into the root page and i want to access the same thing animal slash docs means then you will get an error so no such file or directory available so why it is happening like this is this animals and docs folder is present relative to the desktop so now here you in the you are in the root page and you are trying to access the same animals and dogs but you are getting an error why because you are trying to give a relative path to this one so that is the reason so you will not able to access this thing so relative path indicates the location of file or directly directory relative to the current working directory or another file system another location file system so we need to use the relative paths when referencing files or directory located in the same directory or near the current working directory this makes your code or reference more portable okay so that is one thing so in the same scenario if you want to make this one as an absolute path means then you can need to access so where it is present so in the root in the home okay you need to access in the home sorry in the home and in the test user so you know that this is a test user is there right so let's try to use test user okay test user in the desktop oh sorry it is happening Uh, cd second let's wait cd and here we can have space slash home slash test user sorry slash test user my system test user and you can have it like this test user so now here you can give path like this so here we are in the root path home test user desktop and so wherever you may be so wherever you are so you can access this one so if i press enter for this one so you'll be able to see the output so 
So if I press enter in this one, so directly you will be able to go to the desktop slash animals. So this is called as an absolute path. So absolute path is nothing but slash home like this you will be mentioning. And in the same scenario, you can use the dot for notation also. For example, let's say that I am here cd slash and you can also mention uh, let's say that cd tilde. So directly you can, you, you can use the shorthand notation tilde icon so that you can go to the home home directory. So that means if you are in the present working directory means then you can see home slash test user directly. So and if you want to go to the root path means directly cd slash and if you try to see here we are in the root path. So if we try ls we can able to see it. So using this root path or the tilde operator also we can go it. So right now we know that it is present in the desktop of the test user right the animals folder. So you can go like this tilde slash so directly we can go to desktop okay and animals so directly also you can go it like this so this is also one way which you can do it and for example let's say that uh, let's say i'm here in this one right uh, let's say that i want ls if i try to see so you can also uh, let's say I, I will move one one step backward so i am in here in this one i am in the downloads folder okay let's see the ls nothing is there now if i want i want to go to the desktop in, inside the desktop we are having an animals folder so that means so one root up i am going so previous directory or the parent directory i am going from the downloads parent directory for the downloads is nothing but the home test user and inside this one i am accessing the desktop desktop and i will going to the animals so like this also you can access it not a problem so then also we can able to go to the animals so like this we can use the relative path or the absolute path so this is called as a relative path Cur currently working directory we are trying to move it with using the dot dot and dot means it is nothing but the present working directory so this can be useful when working with the relative paths so this is the one thing which i want to tell you and i have also shown you about the tilde automatically tilde uh, the tilde symbol you have shown you right directly we can go to the home path so this is these are all the different ways so relative and absolute paths allows for efficient referencing of files and directories in the file system so now by using these things you can able to better organize your file operations and make your programs more compatible. The proper usage of the relative and absolute paths depends on the context of your task and the file system that you are working with. So this is the, what I can explain you. So this is all about the cd command and also the uh, absolute and the relative paths. Hope you understood about this concept. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. So in this video, we will learn some of the important commands, another important commands that is about the touch command and also the another command is the MKDAR command. So first we will learn about the touch command. So why we use this touch command is, so this touch command <coughs> is developed as a part of the Unix operating system to easily create or update the timestamp of a file. So that means if you want to create a file in the Linux operating system or Unix operating system, whatever it may be. So we will be using the touch command. So the touch command, we will be using it for creating a file. So normally let's say that I am in a terminal here. So I am opening the terminal, not this terminal. Let's close this terminal. Yeah, here I will open a terminal. This is our terminal. Right now I am in the desktop. So whenever you want to create a file in the desktop, so then you need to write touch and here file1.txt. So this .txt is an extension and file1 is the name of the file. So here I have created it. Automatically a file1.txt file will be created. Here you will be able to see file1.txt. So touch is primarily used to create a new empty files or update the timestamp of the existing files. So this can be useful for various purposes such as creating a temporary placeholder, marking a file as recently exist or forcing a file to be rebuilt. I will try to explain you about that one also. So now I have shown you that to create a new file. So we will simply type touch followed by the file name. So that's it. So there we have also some commonly used parameters are there. So which is nothing but for example, let's say that I am using an ls. So here if you try to use an ls hyphen l and here if you if you try to observe carefully the file one dot txt file has been created at 2105. So at the time of this recording. So now right now it is 2105. 
so now for example let's say that i have the, this file has already been created but i want to change the modified date of this one so that means so that it you so that the user can able to understand that this is a newly accessed file so in that scenario what you can do it is you you can use the command touch hyphen m and you can give the file1.txt automatically if you try to do ls hyphen l now this time you will be able to see that 2106 so that means one in minute has been passed away and the file name has got the new timestamp so that means newly modified time so this one updates the modification time of the file so that's the that's one thing okay and also uh, so there are also other more things which we will be using it so this is the main usage of this one so if you if you are having a file it will create the file so if you want to modify the timestamp means it can create the timestamp so that's that is the main thing not only with my single file so you can also create the multiple files using the touch command let's say that i will create touch file2.txt and file3.txt and these two files will be automatically created in the desktop if you try to see here see file2.txt file3.txt has been automatically created so like this you can also create multiple files at once by specifying the multiple file names so that's that's one thing you need to understand so this is all about the touch command so you need to understand that when you want to create a new file so we will be using the touch command so another important one which i want to explain you is the mkdir command so what is this mkdir command so this mkdir command in linux is used to create directories or the folders so both are one and the same only the names it allows users to create one or more directories at once specifying the directory names and their paths the basic syntax of the mkdir is mkdir and you can give the folder name that is one thing and we can also have a special option that is nothing but hyphen p i will try to tell you about that option also so so many things will be there hyphen m for mode i don't i will exp, we will learn about this mode when we are trying to learn about the file permissions so now if you want to create a folder so for that one what you can do it is let's go to the terminal and here if i want to create folder means mkdir lila web dev so i have created so now if you try to create it and if you try to see here a folder has been created with the name lila web dev so like this we will be creating a directory using the mkdir command <clears throat> for example let's say that i told you about the hyphen p option right let's say that um, i want to create mkdir lila and inside this one i want to create tutorials so like this i want to create the folder so that means here what it is happening so you need to have a lila as a parent and tutorials in that one you need to create the directory but here you need to understand that in the desktop there is we don't have a directory with name lila but we need to create the lila if it is not present inside that lila the tutorials folder has to be created so then what we, if i try to press enter so you are able to get an error that cannot create a directory lila slash tutorials no such file or directory is present why because there is no directory with the name lila and this, therefore it cannot create the tutorials folders inside the lila why because the directory doesn't exist so in order to have this type of things so then what you can do it is so you can give an option that is nothing but hyphen p hyphen p okay now if you try to see create an hyphen p if you press enter automatically the lila tutorials these things will be created so here if you try to see lila folder has been created inside this lila folder you can able to see the tutorial folds folder has also been created so like this so when you want to create a nested directory under a parent means if that parent directory doesn't exist then you can use an option hyphen p that is nothing but parent option so that is one thing so this is all about the mkdir thing and also the touch command so what i will explain you so i have told you about the mkdir and also the touch command for creating the file or directories sorry for creating a file and for creating the folders or the directories we will be using the mkdir command now i want to tell you one important thing that is nothing but uh, about the file type okay i will delete these all the things so here if you try to see so we are having here so dummy.pdf and here we are having .pdf right and image1 file2.txt file1.txt it is we are having it right so now for example let's say that i will go to the terminal okay and i will 
in maze this one uh, now here let's clear it so if i want to know about the file type of that uh, particular image image we are having right image one so if i press enter so here the file command will give you the true type of this one so true type file type of this one so now here you'll be able to see that the file type of this one is jpg image data now here you need to understand one thing that so here if i try to give rename as dot jpg okay so don't think that this dot jpg will define the extension so now if i try to give dot jpg but here if i try to see it so then on then that dot jpg will not define okay here this time so here this dot jpg will not define the extension true extension if i try to remove this dot jpg also then also it will work for example here we are having dummy.pdf right so we know that when i try to open this dummy.pdf it will open in a document viewer so this is a pdf file so in order to know that actual true file type of this one means then what i need to do i need to give file dummy.pdf now it is telling that it is a pdf document and now for example let's say that if i try to remove or uh, rename this one and if you remove this extension for this one okay so you may be thinking that this one this file has been uh, the file type has been changed but here if you try to see the same thing so it is telling that dummy.pdf cannot open dummy.pdf okay so no such uh, okay so here we are having dummy.pdf right so it's only dummy but still we are able to see that still it is telling it's a pdf document so that means the true file type of this file will not be defined by its extension it has its own file type okay so don't think that dot jpg will define its extension so like in windows if you remove dot jpg means then that file cannot be understood right so like this it will not be there in linux it has the true file type will be in somewhere else for example let's say that i will create a new for file that is nothing but touch website so i have created a new file touch website i haven't given any file type for this one so if you try to see here in our uh, desktop so here you'll be able to see a website and now let's try to see the extension for this one file website if i try to give file website and it is telling it is an empty okay so now let's see what will happen so now i have opened this website thing and here i will write html code so i will not write anything i will write just html code so here i will write one head and i am closing head and here i will write body body also i have closed it and here i will write h1 i will try to write the h1 so now we have written this one i have saved it automatically now previously when i try to see the file type of this uh, website it has given it as an empty right now when i try to clear it and if i try to use the same file website now this time it is telling that it is an html document so that means based on the content of this one linux can able to understand what is the true file type of this one in this way the file type will be defined in the linux don't think that it will be defined by using the dot jpg or dot extension which you are trying to give it but it is a easy th but it will be a good habit to mention the extension so that we can able to understand it very easily so that is the file extensions how it will be in the linux thing hope you understood about the concept thing if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela web dev Hi guys, this is Leela. Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. So in this video, Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. In this video, we will learn about the another another editor in the Linux which which comes by default. That is Nano Editor. So the Nano Editor in the Linux it comes by default. So it is used to edit the files. Right now we have seen how to create a file, how to create the directory. These are all the things we have seen it. But now if you want to edit the file means so normally what you will try to do here you can double click on this one. So it will directly it will open. Okay, it is trying to open in the Mozilla. And if you try, if you try to click on something like file.txt, 
and text editor will be opened. So this is by default text editor. And if you want to open in some other place, you can right click and you can use this open with other application so that you can able to open here. So here you will be trying to open with document viewer, text editor, image viewer, anything. So whatever the thing you want, you can open it. You can open it with the Libre Open Office. So these all the things are there. Okay, this is the text editor. If you click on this text editor, now you can able to open this website thing. So like this in the graphical user interface, you can able to use the text editor in order to open and edit the files. So now through the command prompt, if you want to open and edit the files means then what we need to do. So for that one, what we need to do it is, so we have a nano editor. So normally we have also a Vim editor, Emacs, like this uh, different types of editors are there. So those have lot more features and also it is very, for the beginners, it is very complex to learn. So nano editor is a basic editor which you can try to do it. And also it also has a pretty useful features also. In this video, we will try to learn about those features. So for example, let's say that I am moving into the terminal. Let's open the terminal. Here only I will open in terminal. Let's open this one in terminal. So here the terminal has been opened and I will take the profile Leela. Okay. So this is the terminal and I will create the new file that is new folder that is to do's. Let's go into the to do's. These are all the commands we have learned it already. And I am creating a new file that is touch shopping list.txt. So this is the file. So now if you try to see a folder will be created with the name to do's and also if you try to see in this one shopping list.txt file also has been created. So that means by using the commands only we have able to we are able to create a directory and also a file. Now I need to edit the content in this file. So for this one what we can do it is you can use nano and shopping list.txt. So now if you try to open so the editor will open in such a way like this. So here you will be able to see gnu nano 6.2 version and here this is the name of the file and at the bottom you'll be able to see some useful commands or the useful uh, options okay shortcuts so for which you can use it to uh, edit the nano thing so now here you'll be able to see it right so now here you can write uh, list so directly you can write the content whatever you want it list of shopping list items so here you can write it and you can write whatever the thing you want okay milk and onions like this so now i have written the content now let's try to see whether the file content has been added or not if you go to the to do's here and if i click here so here is a hidden file has been created so i have made it a hidden file so actually this one is a hidden file so i have i have checked the option show hidden files so now this is a hidden file and this is shopping list.txt now if you try to open this one so nothing has been written here so now if you want to uh, now i have changed i have written the code using the nano editor but i want to save this file okay now after completion of writing after writing completion so now i need to save this file so how can i save this file is at the bottom you will be able to see some commands okay so where is the save option so now if you try to see the save option so here in the nano you will be able to see this is the option write out so using this write out option you can save the file so that means this is the control o okay so there is no need to have a case sensitive thing o is small only now if I try to press control go and it will ask you that what is the file name I need to write. So this just you can press enter so that wrote four lines. Now the lines has been saved. Now if you try to open the same text editor in the to do's in the text editor. Let's see whether the data has been saved or not. See the data is there. So that means so for saving of the file. So we need to use control go. Now whatever the thing you want to write it you can use control go. Now after completion after completion of writing then I want to exit this editor. So what can you do it is so here you will be able to see control X. So just press control X. That's it finish. So now we have successfully written the content using the nano editor and we have came out of this shopping list.txt file also and we have saved the file also. Now if I try to open so this is one way of writing and there is also another way how we can save the file. So here if you come down. and here I can write something like tomatoes or anything and you can also press ctrl s also 
see here you'll be able to see root file lines so now you can write you can use the control s also to save the file control o is a write out this one also you can use it and control s also you can use it now if i try to do it control x then done so this is one way how we will be writing using the nano editor and we can also have in such a way that uh, we can also search for the options also for example let's say that nano and you can also use the nano directly to create the file also list.txt okay so here automatically the file new file will be created so this is a new file now when you try to do control s automatically so this file will be created here you will be able to see in the to do's to do C list.txt file as well. There is no need to use the touch option. So using the nano also you can create the files. Now let's say that uh, here I will copy this some content here. I am copying this content and I am trying to paste it in our uh, terminal in the nano editor. So here I am using the nano editor before before pasting this one. So if you want to know more commands about this editor and all those things, so here you have an option Control G. So control G if you try to press here, so you will be able to see the manual or the description of this nano editor and also here you will be able to see the shortcut keys and all those things how we can use it. So control G, control F like this we are able to have, there is lot many options are there. Using these options you can edit the file using the nano editor. Let's go out of this one and here I am trying to paste this entire code and here you will be able to see that. So this, this one is all, it's not wrapping, okay, it's come going out of the line. So if you want to have a soft wrapping means then you can use shift 4, oh sorry, shift dollar we got it right, shift 4, oh sorry. One second. Alt 4 I think one second no not Alt 4 so for this one we need to use the uh, Alt plus dollar so that the soft wrapping has been done so now here you'll be able to see the soft wrapping now what I want to do it is so here we have did it right so now let's try to do uh, something like searching so how you can search for this one so here you'll be able to see an option where it is so here you can use something like control w and it will ask you for the search for the item okay we can write the linux so i want to search for an item uh, word linux and if i press enter automatically it can give you that linux has been found here and like this you can able to find the word like this so here linux has been found and and like this you can go alt w so that it will give you the occurrences of this one so like this you can do it so this is one way how you can find the file now search for a particular word in the file. Now for example if you want to have a case sensitive means like let's go here and here you'll be able to see m hyphen c that means meta hyphen c for mac you can get it as an escape and in the windows you can use the alt command. So alt c, alt c means automatically the case sensitive has been happened. Now it is trying to search for the linux which is having l as small and if I press enter and it is telling that the linux with the l small has not been found. And if I want to replace this capital Linux using a small Linux means then what can I do here? Here you have an option control backslash replace. So I can use this option control backslash and it is asking which one you need to replace. So I can remove this MC that is nothing but a case sensitive thing. So only I want to replace the Linux. Okay. So here I want to replace the Linux and if you want you can use the use the case sensitive also. And here it will ask you replace with what I want to replace Linux. So this small one I want to replace or otherwise let's say that Unix I want to replace it with Unix. And press enter it will ask you I have found this occurrence do you want to replace. So you just press Y for yes and automatically that one will be replaced. So here you will be able to see that Linux has been replaced with Unix. So like this you can go on press S so that it will be replaced. So if you want to replace all things means just pre uh, press A everything will be replaced and afterwards if you want to save it means just press ctrl w or ctrl s automatically all the things will be saved you can go to ctrl x so this is the basic thing about the nano editor 
so these are the pretty things which you can be which we, which will be very useful for us to edit the file or search for a particular word in a file like that and there are also lot more options are available so if you want you can do with the control g and you can see the options and all those things so this is about the nano editor what i want to explain to you hope you understood about this nano editor if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela webdev in this video we will learn some of the important commands in the linux that is removing the directory or the files or moving of the files or the directory and the last one is the copying of the file or the directory so these three commands we'll try to see so we have learned about how to create a file how to create the directory and the nano editor how to edit the files and these are all the things we have seen it now the important uh, uh, the last thing which whichever is whatever is left is the removing a file so if you want to remove the file what we need to do is we have a command called as an rm so normally how you will delete a file for example let's say that so this is the file one and if you try to delete this file so you will right click and you will tell move to trash automatically the file will be deleted then afterwards sometime you re you realize that oh i don't want to delete this file i need that file then what we are what you can do in the graphical user interface just you can go to the trash bin and you can get that file automatically and if you click here so you can restore from the trash automatically the file will come here so this is one way so this is all through the uh, ui interface but through the command line also we can delete the file but here you need to understand that there is no replacement or there is no backup for this one if you are trying to delete that file through the command line means then that means it is permanently gone so the temporarily it will not be stored in another place like trash or anything by using the command it is permanently gone that is the thing you need to remember and now here this is our terminal so let's say that i am in the desktop that is nothing but my home user test user and these are all the list of files which we are having let's say that i want to remove that file file 1 so you just you can write file 1 that's it so if you try to click on this one automatically file 1 will be deleted here also the file 1 doesn't exist so if you try to see the ls the file 1 has file file 1 has been deleted so this is how you can delete it directly the file 1 and now if you try to see the command or the manual for this rm so remove files or directories and now if you come down here you will be able to see the prompt before every removal so i means it will ask you that whether i want to delete it or not yes or no so for example let's say that uh, i want to delete rm file1.txt let's assume file1.txt and i will give hyphen i then it will ask you that i uh, shall i want to remove this one so if you try y means automatically that will be deleted so this is the interactive option now if you try to come down you will be able to see another option which is nothing but hyphen d so this removes the empty directories so that means so this is used to remove the directories for example let's say that um, let's go to q and here we are having ls right so let me clear these all things so let's say that i have a directory mkdir test directory so let's try to go into this test directory and i will create some files like file1 file2 and file3 okay or otherwise let's come let's come back and we know that if you try to check this ls uh, test file folder all the of all the files are empty now i want to delete this test folder so how can i delete this one so we know that rs test that's it now if you try to click here it is saying that we cannot delete the test directory why because it is a directory it is saying it is not a file so that means we need to provide an option in such a way that rm test and you need to provide an option hyphen d now if you try to click here automatically the directory is created uh, de deleted so this is how we will be deleting for example let's say that uh, i am having mkdir test folder i am creating again so i am let's go into this uh, test folder and let's say that we are having some files like file 1 file 2 and x and y so these are the files which we are having now if you type ls so these are the four files which we are having in the test folder so if you try to see here in the user interface also you'll be able to see that these are the files existing so that means this folder or the this directory is not empty so now i want to delete this one so what can i do so let me clear it out this one all yeah so i want to delete this one rm hyphen d okay and i want to delete this test folder 
so it is telling the directory is not empty so that means even if i mention this hyphen d option also it is not deleting why because only the empty directories will be deleted if you mention the hyphen d option so then it is telling that the test directory is not empty so please uh, so i cannot delete this one is saying so even if you want to delete this file even the files are existing means then you need to provide an option that is man rm if you try to see here so here you will be having one option that is nothing but um, i will try to show you yeah hyphen r so this one is a recursive so hyphen r small r or hyphen capital r whatever it may be so whichever maybe you want to use it you can use it not a problem and recursive so this one removes the directories and also the contents and also the pre, the pre, contents also recursively it is trying to delete it let's try to provide this option so here i will try to delete rm hyphen d okay or otherwise i can provide hyphen r directly so now there is no need to provide the hyphen d why because hyphen r means recursively we are trying to delete it and test if i try to mention now if i press enter automatically that entire folder has been created if you try to see the ls by typing ls so nothing is present here so that means the test folder is not there so like this we can delete the entire thing now you may be getting doubt that i don't want to delete this entire directory or the entire files in the directory i want to uh, maintain some uh, files in that one so that uh, whenever i am trying to delete so this uh, prompt has to ask me that whether i need to delete it or not then we can use an interactive mode for example let's say that i will create again mkdir test so in this uh, let's go to the test one and here i will create touch x comma y comma z a comma b comma c okay so these are the files which i am trying to create it let's assume so if you try to see a b c x y z these are the files that are existing in the test folder now if you try to open this one here also interactive thing and here you will be able to see these are all the files that are present in this one now what i want to do here let's go back and i want to delete it recursively but i don't want to delete all the files i want to keep only the a and x file so then what i want to do it is so here you need to do rm hyphen recursive and i need to use an interactive mode and i want to delete this test so then it is telling that so do i need to enter do i want to enter into the test directory yes so press yes and do you, do you want me to delete the z folder yes i want to delete it do you want to delete the uh, a folder no i don't want to delete this one so do you want to delete the x folder no i don't want to delete this one so remaining all you can delete it okay so these are all can be deleted so do you want do you want to remove the test folder why well, i don't want to remove this test directory why because i have i want to keep a and x file in the test directory the remaining all needs to be deleted so i can keep no so now if you try to see the ls and if you go into the test folder and if you see the ls a b x y z oh sorry we haven't uh, mentioned that z and all those things right so let's try to clear it out and here uh, what i will do is i will do the same thing okay and i will do the same thing s yes. do you want to descending yes i need to provide s yes. so do you want to delete z yes do you want to delete no do you want to delete no and do you want to delete b yes do you want to delete y yes then you want to delete uh, remove the directory no i don't want to remove it so now if you go into the test folder only the a and x x files will be available see like this you can give the interactive mode so that the uh, terminal will ask you each file or each directory do you want to remove it or not so this is how we can do it but but if you are having more large and large more and more content means so this will be too much annoying but hope this one is somewhat helpful which i want to show you so this is how we will be deleting the folders or the files in the linux or the unix environment using the rm command so if you want to know more details about this rm command means you can use this man rm and you can able to try all the options iphone force means so existence is all the things so you'll be having so this is the this is all about the rm thing in the next video we will see about the move command and also a copy command so that we can able to understand it very easily so that's it guys about this uh, removing the files if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela webdev 
in the previous video we have learned about how to delete a particular file or folder using the rm command now in this video we will learn how we can move the file that means how we can move the files from one uh, location to another location using the using the command line so for moving the files from one location to another location so we use the command called as an mv command so move command we will be using it so let's try to see the manual for this move command so here if you try to see so moves and also it renames the files i will try to show you the renaming thing also so mv command is used to move file from one location to another location and also it can be used for renaming the files also let's we will try to see this one these both the things how we can do it using this move command and here you will be able to see the description rename source to destination or move source to the directory and here some of here are some of the options that are available so you can able to see these all the options and now let's try to see so here for example let's say that we are on the test folder right so let's move on to the for example let's say that um, i'm in the desktop so here we are having a uh, these are all the files we are available so let's try to create a mkdir cleanup so i want to clean up my desktop so i have created a cleanup desktop now if i try to see the ls so now what i want to do it is i want to move this file3.txt file to the cleanup folder so let's try to move it for this one what we need to do is mv command and first we need to give the source file so there is nothing but file3 what what i want to move so i want to move this file3.txt and what i can do is for example let's say that not file3 so let's try to move the dummy file okay so this is also one file right i want to move this dummy file to where i need to move it to the cleanup so just we can move it so now if i press enter automatically the file has been moved if you see the cleanup command sorry the cleanup folder so you'll be able to see the dummy folder is present in the dummy file is present in the cleanup folder and if you try to see the ls the dummy file has been removed and it is there in the cleanup uh, folder so fine so not only the single file using the move command we can also move the multiple files also so here for example let's say that i want to move this file2.txt and also the file3.txt to the cleanup folder so how can i move this one so just you can use the move command so what is the thing i want to move it file2.txt and file3.txt so these three files you can mention it like this space multiple files or how many multiple files are there so those many multiple files you can mention it and at the last you can mention the destination so i want to move it to the cleanup so press enter automatically those two files is moved to the so here if you try to see the ls so there is no file to uh, file 2 and also file 3 and if you try to see that same thing in the cleanup so you'll be able to see that those three files are present in the cleanup so this is how we will be moving the files from one location to the another location so not only the files we can also move the folders also so let's say that i am having the test folder or otherwise let's say the to do's folder is there okay the to do's folder is there so let's try to see what are the file what are the data that is available in the to do's so the to do's folder is not empty already it has some files that is list and also a shopping list.txt file so i want to move this completely to do's folder to the cleanup folder so what can i do so here i can mention the to do's and i want to move it to the cleanup that's it so now you can press enter automatically the to do's folder has been moved now if you try to see here the to do's folder is not present and if i go to if i try to see the ls in the cleanup so you will be able to see that to do's folder is existing in the cleanup folder so like this we can move one file from from one location to another location let's say that i want to move this uh, test and image.jpg and website also to the cleanup means i can also mention the uh, different varieties of files also we can move it so you can't think that oh, i need to mention only multiple files or multiple folders you can also mention the combination of files and the folder also for example let's say that i want to move image1.jpg and the test folder and also the website okay to the cleanup that's it so now it will be automatically moved so now if you try to see the ls so there is only cleanup and also the animals now if i try to show you the things that is present so directly you can see able to see so this is how we can move the files or the folders using the move command so not only like this let's say that i moved into the cleanup okay or otherwise i am not there in the cleanup 
so we can also move in such a way that uh, move clean up so it should be file to dot txt okay i need to move it to the home page okay let's say the tilde home page okay so if i try to move it to the home page means that is nothing but home slash test user if i press enter automatically that file will be moved to the home page so for example let's say that uh, cd tilde icon if i try to show you so here you'll be able to see that file 2.txt has been moved to my home location so like this also you can move it so sitting wherever you are there so you can mention the absolute path or the relative path and you can move the files from one place to another place so in the same scenario you are in the home page now what i want to do it is i want to move this file 2.txt by renaming this one i need to rename it and i need to place it in the cleanup so that means what i can do is i need to move this file to .txt but it should be placed in the um, desktop so that means home page slash desktop and the cleanup folder and it should be named with uh, file to rename .txt so like this it needs to be placed so now if i press enter automatically if i try to see here the ls has the in the ls the file has been moved and if you try to check in the ls Mm, let's move to the desktop and if you try to see the cleanup folder and here you'll be able to see that file to hyphen rename.txt has been moved with the naming convention so now you need to understand that so both we can uh, move the files or also we can rename the file so in the same place for example let's say that i want to rename the file same in the same location means then what i can do is so move file to hyphen rename dot txt okay so we are on the cd cleanup so I will, let's say that i am in the cleanup folder so i want to rename this uh, let's say that i want to rename this file to hyphen rename dot txt to the file to dot txt only so that means what i can do we can rename file to dot txt to file to that's it so automatically this will be renamed so here see the file has been renamed so like this in the same location also you can mention it to rename that file so this is how by using the move command so we can uh, uh, change the what i want to say is we can move the files and also we can rename the files in the same scenario what you can do it is you you can use the copy command also for example let's say that i want to use the copy command so copy command means it will create it will it will maintain the copy of that one and it will try to uh, replicate the same folder for example let's say that uh, I am in the ls right so cleanup is there so for example let's say that touch x I have created one file and I want to create a I create the copy of this one so copy uh, x source to the y so now if you try to see here ls and y has been created so that means from the x the file y has been created so now I want to copy these two files and I need to place it in the cleanup so that means what I can do is copy x and y and i need to place a place in the cleanup so now if i press enter so automatically these x and y files has been copied into the cleanup and here the x and y files will be placed like this only but in the cleanup if you try to see in the cleanup the x and y files will be present so you'll be able to see the x and y files so this is how we can do it and not only like this so for example let's say that uh, i want to uh, back up this uh, cleanup directory enter thing so here i can use cp copy cleanup and i want to use something like cleanup backup okay so i want to do it i want to copy it like this now it is telling that i can't copy is it is omitting the directory why because in the cleanup it is not empty and it contains some all the files so for this reason what you can mention it is you can mention it as an hyphen recursive hyphen or all the files will be copied from the cleanup now if you try to see the ls sorry ls if you try to see see the both the cleanup and cleanup backup the five folders has been present but both are one and the same only so for example if you try to see the cleanup so uh, sorry cleanup and this one have the same files and if you try to see the cleanup hyphen backup means then this one also has the same files only so that means both are copied so in this way the copy command we can use it to copy the files or the folders so the move command is used to move the files instead of copying it will move the files from one location to another location and also using the mv command also we can rename the files or the folders so
so this is what about the move command and also the copy command this is both are one in the same only and if you want to copy the folder directory means you need to use the hyphen or recursive or you can use this hyphen i interactive mode also just like the <coughs> uh, what i have used it for this rm command so in the same scenario we can use it so this is all about the concept hope you understood about this move command and also the copy command if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela webdo so we have learned so many commands in the linux right so creating a directory creating a file editing a file removing a file moving a file renaming and copying so like this so many huge uh, number of commands we have learned it so now we will keep these all commands apart and now we will try to learn uh, some important concept not important concept so some useful tricks so which in the linux it will be very much useful that means nothing but the shorthand keys and all those things so which will be very much useful for us to in our day to day life for example let's say that the first come first come first shortcut key which i want to explain you is for example when i am trying to use ls okay so i will be able to get ls hyphen l so i am able to get this all the details ls hyphen a okay so like this i can able to get it so like this we are able to get it right now so now if you try to see here the entire screen has been filled with a lot of commands and the output now if i want to clear this lot of commands and the output means what you can do i just simply use the clear command instead of using this clear command so we also have an another method that is nothing but so like this we are having right so just instead of typing the clear and pressing enter just you can use the control l okay if you try to use this control l it will clear all the command side screen and terminal and everything it will clear it control l is a shortcut key so fine so this is one thing which we have learned it so first command and the next one which i want to explain you is so for example let's say that uh, whenever i have written some command uh, touch and here i have written in such a way that i have written a spelling mistake and i have written file 2.txt and file 1.txt so like this i have i am going on writing the command so after some time i have recognized that i have written a spelling mistake at the starting of the file so normally what we will try to do so we will we will use the left side arrow and we will move one by one like this right in order to reach this one so if the command is too much bigger means so we will we press this left arrow like that in order to reach the starting of the command so instead of that one we can have a special shortcut key if you are present at that uh, the, at the end or in the middle or somewhere if you want to go to the beginning of the starting of the line command then you can use control a directly it will go to the starting so you can change whatever you want okay so like this you can change it and if you want to go to the end of the line command means then you need to use control e control e it will go directly to the end of the line command control a it will go to the starting control e it will be going to the end so these are these two commands we will be using more often while we are writing the command when we write spelling mistake or anything means if you want to go to the starting of the command you can use this control a and if you want to go to the end of the line command means then you can use this control e so these are the two prop, uh, com shortcut keys which you can use it and the another one which you want to use it is for example if i want to move one one character one character backward means so normally we use the left arrow or we use the arrow keys to move forward and backward so for this one also we have a shortcut that is nothing but control f control f means it will move one step one character forward and control b means it will move one character backwards so this is also one shortcut keys which you can use it so you can use the arrow keys or otherwise you can use a control f and control b also so why this control f and control b is present is instead of uh, uh, moving our fingers or our hand to the arrows and all those things so you can make your hand fingers in the center of the keyboard only by using this one because of that reason this um, commands is there this command moving forward and moving backward one character which is there you can also use the uh, what i want to say is arrow keys also but the main interesting thing comes is so here word so for example here we are moving one by one by character wise but i want to move forward word wise so for example let's say that here we are having like these words let's assume okay so this is these are the words we are having so now i want to move one by one word by word forward means then you need to use the alt f so alt f means it will move option in the mac alt f means it will move 
word by word forward and if you want to move word by word backward means then you need to use the alt uh, alt b so the same thing alt b we need to use it to move backward word word back so this is the these are the another command which i want to tell you so now the um, another shortcut uh, key shortcut uh, i want to explain you is for example let's say that uh, you are having uh, t u o so here you are having two characters and you want to swap these two characters means then you can use the control t control t will swap the character now u o is there you know that the spelling is mistake the spelling is mistake and you want to swap that u and o means then just you can use this control t automatically o will go back so that is that is this is also one thing so if you want to swap the character then you will be using the control t in the same scenario if you want to swap the word means so here file to txt is there txt needs to come front means then you can use alt t automatically txt will come front so like this we can swap the character or this we can swap the words use swap the character means control t swapping the words means alt t so these are the two things so the another one which i want to explain you is the another one which i want to explain you is the uh removing the line from a cursor to end of the line for example let's say that you are you, you are present at the starting of here so you are present at the file 2 and i want to delete all the uh, sorry i want to delete all the uh, command that is present after the file 2 so if i want to delete means then what i can use is so here i can use control k control k it will remove so starting from there starting from the cursor it will remove all these to the end of the line if you want to remove uh starting uh, so from the current cursor to the beginning of the line means then you need to use the control u so control k will remove the line from the uh, from the current cursor to the end of the line control u will remove the cursor from the from the current cursor to the beginning of the line so this is also one another command important command which you need to understand so the, uh, the another one which i want to explain you is delete the word from the current cursor for example let's say that uh, touch file txt file to txt like this is there means then i want to delete a current word means delete the word from the current cursor means then i can use the alt d it will delete it will it will delete the uh, sorry it it, it will uh, control uh, so alt d means it will delete the uh, full word so here it will try to delete the full word Why, what is this happening uh, alt d delete the word from the cursor so alt d oh okay it is deleting the entire thing so for example let's say that from the current cursor i am here and i want to delete the entire thing means so here i can use like this it will delete the entire thing so here it will delete the alt d it will delete the entire word but if you want to remove only the character means then you can use delete or back option or something like that or otherwise if you want to delete a single character means then you need to use the control d control d will delete a single character so that is also one thing alt d means it will delete the word from the current cursor and control d means it will delete the single character so if you want to delete the word backward means for example let's say that you are in the text here and if you are using alt d means it will delete from there and if you want to delete the word backward means then you need to use the control w okay delete the word backward means then you need to use the control w it will delete like this so these are the things which you need to understand so the last one which i want to explain you is for example let's say that uh, touch Mm, ls comma uh, sorry touch file dot txt like this is there means so if you want to delete this entire thing means you can delete this entire thing by using control k right but if you want to if you want if you want that same word which you have deleted it means then you can use the control y then the uh, command will get back again so that means it is something like a clipboard so how you will be using the control c control v control k whatever the command you have deleted using the comma shortcut key control y if you press it it will come back again that one so yeah this is called as an yanking yanking to get the kill command so the at last last before closing of this one i want to explain you another uh, another thing so for example let's say that you want to have some yesterday's command something so you have typed some command and you want to get that command means then what you got we can use it you can type history so that it will give you all the commands that you have typed up to here up to now so here this is the history command and now if you want to execute a particular command means for example let's say that uh, i want to execute uh, some command something like uh, pwd okay i want to execute this pwd so here the number is present right so you can use this one uh, you can use this 
exclamatory 236 and press enter that pwd command will be executed so that means whatever the number is assigned to that history command so you can directly use this one so uh, for example let's say that if you want to search the history means then what you can do it is you can use the control r and you can search install something like this means it will give you the command from the history so the history which you are trying to search it so this is one way which you can get it so this is the history thing so the where this all the history and all those details is present is, is the so in the home page so if i try to show you so there will be a hidden file that is bash underscore history so in this bash underscore history everything will be stored so i will try to show you that nano bash underscore history so here oh sorry bash underscore history if i try to open so this is the this is the place where all the saved history commands will be there so these are the most useful shortcut commands which i want to explain you in the linux environment so now what we have learned uh, what we have learned these all the things is control l for clearing control a for the move to the starting of the line command control e to move to the end of the line command and control f to move forward one character control b means moves one character backward and alt f moves one word forward and alt b means moves one mode backward control t swaps the character alt t means it swaps the entire word control k means it removes the line from the current cursor to the end of the line and control u means it removes the uh, entire command from current cursor to the beginning of the line alt d means it deletes the word from the current cursor control d means it will delete the single character control w means it will delete the word backwards so control y i have shown you that yanking the king whichever you have deleted from the control k skill command so you can uh, paste it using like a clipboard thing and history it will show you all the history of the commands so if you want to run the particular command in the history means you can use the exclamatory and the history number and you can run that command and if you want to search the history com particular command in the search history means then you can use control r so that you can search with the specific keyword so these are all the particular commands which are available in the linux thing so lot more thing are also there so but these are the most useful thing which we'll be using more often hope you understood about these shortcut keys and all those things if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela webdev so in this video we will learn some of the important commands in the unix operating system or the linux operating system so the first command which we are trying to learn is the cat command so the cat, cat command is a fundamental tool used in the many unix based operating systems including the linux it is known for its versatility in in handling the file manipulations so let's let's break down this cat command so normally this cat command is used in which scenario is for example let's say that i will go back to our home page home page home page means that is nothing but the user page and if you try to do the ls so this is my <coughs> the directory now let's go into the desktop so i am going into the desktop so i am pressing ls so this is the code which we are able to see now here what i want to do it is so here in our ls so let's me let me make it little bit bigger yeah so in this uh, ls so let's clear it off yeah oh, let's go to the leela profile or otherwise yeah, this is this looks somewhat bigger right i will close this one i will close this one yeah here let's open this bigger one so that the viewing will be very easy now let's let's bigger yeah yeah here <coughs> i am in the desktop let's close this so here normally when i go to this cleanup okay and if i do the ls so here we are having some multiple thing right now i want to see the contents of this website thing i want to see the contents of this website so what can we do here one thing is so we can go to the nano website uh, and here i can press enter now if i press nano and this will go into an editing page okay so here if you want to edit you can edit it and all those things you can do and if you want to come you can give control x so that means when you are trying to view the files you are going to the nano and all those things instead of going instead of typing nano and all those things if you want to just view the file content if you want to just view the file content then we can use command that is nothing but cat 
cat website so it just simply shows you the output of that file not only this one so whatever the file you are having just press cat and uh, website it will give you all the things so let's go to the to do's and here in this to do's if i do ls so we are having some multiple thing right and if i try to do cat shopping list if i want to see the content in the shopping list means then i can press directly like this i can able to see the cat command so here like this so this is the use of this cat command so what way we will be using this cat command is so if you want to see the content of the file whatever the content of the file is there then we will be using this cat command not only this one so we can also use the cat command to copy the content into an another file also for example let's say that uh, for example let's say that uh, let's say that uh, uh, i am having no, not only that copying thing let's remove this one rm copy.txt i am removing this file so for example let's say that i am having shopping list and i will try to create another one something like list data dot txt okay and here i will write this is the list data and sample text or something like this and i will press control s so okay and i will do the control a sorry control s and control x so that's fine so now if i want to see the contents of this list data means then what i can do here i will press enter and if i want to see the shopping list means and i can do like this so these are the two things which we can do it now i want to combine these two files and i want to see the data so for this one what i can do is list data list data and shopping list so i can combine these two files and press enter and here at the top you will be able to see this is the list data sample text and this one is the content of this shopping list so like this how many files why how many files you want you can add it and you can see this one so this is nothing but cat means concatenations concat the short form of this cat is concatenating the files so it will concatenate the files into a single one and it will show you the output for example let's say that you can also do another thing for example let's say that i want to combine this list data and shopping list data and i want to copy it in an another file so we can also do it like this cat list data list data dot txt shopping list dot txt and you can use a greater than symbol and you can do combine dot txt okay so the whatever the content is present in the list data and shopping list data both will be combined and it will be placed in this file that's it now if you try to do the ls you'll be able to see a combined and if i want to see the content in this combine.txt here i am able to see the content of both the files whatever the files you are having the content present in the list data and also in the shopping list the both com both data is combined and it is placed in the combine.txt so this is the usage of this cat command so this cat command you can use the cat along with the redirection that is greater than to create a new file and you can copy the new file that one <coughs> that is one thing so other functionalities means so you can also use so like this so these are this is the this is the main concept behind the thing so i hope this explanation clarifies about the cat command capabilities so cat command is used for viewing of the files not only a single file you can also view for the multiple files by by mentioning the files file names and also if you want to combine the multiple files data and if you want to copy it into a separate file means you can use this combine text it's that cp command also we have seen it right instead of that one cp command also it will be copying the data and here also this one also will copy the data so that is it so if you want to see the man for this one so man cat means you will be able to see the details of this one so here i finish this there are some options are available in this one so you can make a use of this thing also so that's it about this cat command and before closing this one i want to show you an another thing also that is a less command okay so what is this less command for example let's say that i am having here um, i am having here a list.txt file okay so the list.txt file means if i try to do the list.txt file list.txt file if i press enter and here you will be able to see the long way of text here so this is the total way. what does this cat command will do it will directly dump over the complete data and it will display you so now here the less command is a pager tool it is something like a pager tool it is used for viewing the contents of the text one screen at a time so it is particularly useful for browsing page browsing the large files efficiently so for example let's say that i will try to use the same thing less list.txt i will use the same file list.txt now here you will be able to see only one thing so now if you want to 
press arrow mark down uh, down arrow and you will be able to see it like this one by one line by line line by line it will come if you try to space bar means the next page will come okay so here like this we will be having some options in a such way that space bar or page down means move forward to one page b or page up means it will go it will go back to the one page up and arrow keys and line by line if you want to move it line by line it will move so like this it will go to the end of the thing and if you want to search for a particular pattern means you can use the slash and you can search for a particular pattern and press enter you will be able to find the pattern and if you want to exit means you can press q to exit it directly so that means the less command what it will try to do is it will give you the a long page large files data if you want to view it means it will try to show you one page by page whatever the screen up to where it will be visible it will show one by one page and by moving up and down arrows and all those things you can make you can check that page and you will be having space bar or page down means it will go one by one forward to one page another it will move arrow, arrow marks means for line by line it will move or b or page up means it will go backwards so that is the main thing that is the main thing about the cat command and also the less command cat command means it will try to show you all the content at a time less command means it will try to show you the screen how much it is visible it will show you that much page only and you can see the next content by using the arrow marks or the f command f f button or the b button so this is what about the uh, less command and the cat command hope you understood about this concept if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. In this video, we will learn another op another commands in the Linux or the Unix operating system that is tag command. So, what is this tag command? So, the tag command we have learned about the cat command, right? So, where we are right now in let's go to the desktop and uh, uh, let's go to the to dos also cd cleanup and uh, let's go to the to dos to dos. And here if you try to see here we are having some of the text right so now if i want to see the contents of this shopping list what i need to do cat shopping list.txt file so now this is the shopping list.txt file so what this tag command will do so the tag command if you try to use this tag command tag for the same shopping list.txt file see if you try to see here the entire content whatever it is there here it has been printed in a reverse order not in the reverse order so what can i tell is uh, reverse the order of the lines in the within the file so displays the reverse content to standard output your terminal so that is what that is one thing so what it will try to do is so it will read the specified file entirely and reverse the order of the line so here list of shopping items is at the first place whereas now it is at the last place so that means the entire content will be reversed in the uh, reverse order of the lines so that is the one thing for example let's say that i will try to create um, nano sample.txt file in this sample.txt file what i will try to do is line 1 and line 2 line line 2 and i will write it as a line 3 so these are the two files which we are having so i am pressing ctrl s and we will go to ctrl x now if I try to do sample.txt what you will be able to get the output line 1 line 2 line 3 in the same scenario if I try to do sample.txt now you will be able to see line 3 line 2 line 1 so this is the difference between the cat and tag so you can ask me that what is the important of this tag thing so here if you try to see cat dot slash sorry tilt symbol slash dot bash so we are have we will be having bash underscore history right so let's go to the cd home page and let's try to do this one let's try to check so normally this cat and tag command where it will be found is for example let's say that i want to see the complete bash history so that means the list of all the commands which i have typed it so if you try to see this bash history and if i try to press enter so these are all the commands which we are able to see so these are all coming one by one like this right so now what i want to do it is so here instead of having it like this if i want to see 
the first one so here i want to see the, the reverse order means then what i can do tag dollar slash dot bash underscore history now you will be able to see is all the commands in a reverse order so that we can see the latest commands whichever we have typed it at the top so like this we will be using so there i will try to show you another commands also which we will be using so just i am trying to show you cat and tag and another one another command which i want to explain you is that is rev command so for example let's say that here we are we will go, go to the desktop cd clean up and here we will be having the cd to do's right so now if i try to show you the sample.txt file so for example let's say that cat sample.txt file if you try to see you'll be able to see the command uh, content of the file and if i try to use this tag command and we'll be able to see in a reverse order but if you try to use the rev command sample.txt now what it is trying to do it is so the same the same files lines which will be displayed but the lines each line will be displayed in a reverse order so that means one will come at the starting so one e n i l so like this you'll be able to see it so that means rev means the reverse order so it will try to reverse the data reads each line of the specific file or standard input reverse the order of the characters with each individual line display the reverse line to the standard output so that is the main thing so this is this is these are the main thing so now for example where we can use this tag commands and the rev command is quickly viewing the end of the log files i have shown you right so reversing the order of the entries in a list and rev command means so certain text manipulation tasks and all those things we will be using it so this is all about the main thing so the main difference between this tag is tag command reverse the order of the lines within a file rev means reverses the order of the characters within each file so that is all about the rev command and the tag command and now what we will try to do is, uh, discuss is so here we will try to discuss another one that is nothing but head command i will try to explain you about the head command so this head command is a commonly used thing in our unix like operating system that lets you peek at the beginning of the file by default it will display the first 10 lines but you can also customize to show more or more lines for example let's say that um, so clear so here if you want to see only the first 10 lines of this one means so let's say that i want to head and i will try to do dot slash bash underscore history and it will display only the top 10 commands only so the top 10 lines of this commands only you'll be able to see so if you want you can also customize it so that means how many lines you want to display it so here what initially without mentioning anything it will show only the 10 lines so if you want to display the lines means then you need to use the hyphen n option so that means head and here you can use something like hyphen n and i can show 20 lines so now it will show you 20 lines still the short command means what i can do it is so we can also use the 20 directly like this sorry hyphen 20 i think i didn't remember exactly so normally we'll give it like this only let's try to see yeah hyphen 20 if you mention so like this you'll get it in the long format means what you need to do it is so here you need to mention hyphen hyphen lines so like this also you can mention it so this is the way which you can display the head command head command means it will display only the first 10 10 lines or the what i can say is um, uh, what i can say is the first 10 lines of the file you'll be able to see the head command so that is about the head command and the opposite of this head command is the tail command so tail command is one of the important thing which we will be using more often in the linux environment so the tail command is a useful tool to display the ending portion of a file by default it also shows the last 10 lines but you can also customize this behavior using various options so here for example let's say that if i try to use the tail dollar slash bash underscore history means bash underscore history means then it will show you the last 10 lines so these are the last 10 10 lines or the 10 commands which we have used it and if you want to mention the lines means you can also mention the same option like hyphen n 20 and you'll be able to see the last 20 lines so where this tail command will be very much useful is for example let's say that cd slash will go it here ls and you will be able to see cd slash where 
okay and you and here you will be able to have one log sorry cd log and in this one you will be able to have one file that is nothing but syslog okay and if i try to see this file cat syslog so you don't have any permission okay so let's try to log in as uh, root user okay so this uh, these are system files we cannot have permission and uh, so cd slash let's go cd slash var slash log okay and here you will be having that one syslog syslog means whatever the things that is happening inside the system so a log will be a log will be created here so if you try to see here a lot way of log is there right i want to know only the last 10 lines or the last latest one which has been happened so what i can do tail syslog okay so if i try to show you only the last lines has been showing but i want to uh, listen to the current behavior so that means current currently uh, dynamically if that uh, if the log is getting updated means i want to get it so that means i want this tail command to listen to the syslog whenever that is updated i want to show the latest report so for this one we have an option that is nothing but tail hyphen f okay and you can use syslog okay so this is thing so now it is trying to check this file so if i try to open the terminal okay i have opened another terminal and uh, let's go to the home page and here i will go to the desktop and let's say that i have created a new file that is nothing but leela list or anything or otherwise leela web dev so we have created one file and if i press enter see here some system logs has been fired if you try to see here some list system log has been fired that uh, Leela Webdo Buzz Demon so a successfully activated service Leela Webdo the, the started cleanup service so that means whatever it has been happened in the memory or anything in the DB or anything so the logs will be created here so this is how we can use the tail command to check the latest logs or anything is if it is happening means by using the tail command we can use it so these are all the different types of commands that are available one is we have learned about the tag command and also the rev command and we have learned about the head command and also the tail command so these are the main most important commands which we will be using in the linux operating system hope you understood about this concept so if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela web dev in this video we will learn some of the useful commands in the linux that is about the wc command and also a sort command so I will try to explain you the different scenarios how we will be using this, this one. The w, first of all, we will see about the WC command. WC command, the full form for this one is uh, word count. So in shortcut, we will call it as in WC. So it's a pretty simple thing, which I will try to explain you. It is a handy utility in Linux and similar systems also used for counting the various aspects of the file. Its primary function is to determine the number of lines, words or character and the characters within a file. So I will try to explain you this one. For example, let's say that I am going to ls here. So let's say that I am having the shopping list. Okay. So this is the shopping list file. Now this file, when I try to use this wc command on this one, it will give you the word count. How many words are there in this one? So if I try to press enter and you will be able to see some of the numbers. That is nothing but 5, 11, 59 and the last you will be able to see the file name. So what is this concept of about this one? The first one indicates the number of lines that are available in this file. Lines means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the total number of files available in lines available in the shopping list is 5. And the 11 means it is nothing but the word count. Total number of words 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 are the total words it are available in the file. And the 59 is nothing but the character count. So the number of characters that are available in this one 59. And the last one is the file name. So it is also provides the summary line with total counts when dealing with the multiple files also. I will try to explain you about that one. Multiple files, I will I will say, I will tell you. So WC, this word count is useful for various tasks, including getting basic file statistics like size and content volume, tracking progress of file generation or editing, scripting tasks that involves file manipulation analysis. So combining with other commands like grep and all those things which we will which we will try to learn in the further upcoming videos. 
So there are also some of the flags that are available in this WC command also. If I try to do man WC and you will be able to see some of the options in this one that is nothing but hyphen C, hyphen M, hyphen L, hyphen capital L, hyphen W like this. So these are the things. I will try to explain you one by one in this one. So here if I try to explain you, so let's try to clear it out. Okay, control L also it will clear it out. So the first one is the hyphen C option. So if you try to see, if you try to use the hyphen C option for this shopping list dot shopping list dot txt file, it will give you the total number of bytes that are, uh, it will count the bytes for this one. It will give you the bytes. And if the same scenario, if I try to do WC hyphen W shopping list, it will give you the total number of words that are available. And if you use this hyphen L shopping list, same thing, I will try to use it and it will give you the total number of lines that are available and he will and if you try to use the same option with a capital L option then it will give you the longest length of the longest line in characters so this is the length of the longest line that is available in the file so the, I hope this explanation diff clarifies the concept of this WC command so when dealing with this uh, multiple files means for example let's say that what are the multiple files we are having sample.txt shopping list so you can give something like sample.txt, sample.txt and also the shopping list.txt and if I press enter. So here you will be able to see this is the things which you are able to understand. So the first one gives you the line count and the another one gives you the word count and last one will give you the character count and here also the same thing for the shopping list and the total it is trying to add and it will give you the total. So like this you can use also you can also give multiple files to get the word count line count and also the total number of characters that are available in this one hyphen m also it will give you the total number of characters so this is all about the wc command so it's a pretty simple and the straightforward it will give you the word count or the character count and the lines how count counting the lines in the file so now let's go on to the let's move on to the another one so that is nothing but uh, what i want to tell you is so control l so it will clear it out so that is nothing but a sort command. So the sort command means what I will try to do is it's a command in Linux. It's a versatile tool for organizing information in text files. It sorts the lines of the text based on the, your specific criteria, making it easier to analyze and interpret the data. So sorts by line means sort reads a file and receives an input and arranges each line in a particular order. The default sorting means by default it sorts the line alphabetically consider the entire line as the sorting key. This means lines are ordered according to the first letter, then the second and so on. Let's try to, we can also have a reverse uh, ascend, uh, by, de by default it is an ascending order. You can also choose the descending order by mentioning hyphen R option. So now let's try to see. So here I will be creating one normal file nano names.txt file. Okay. And here I will add some names. Alice, Charlie, and Bob, and David. Okay, so these are the files which you will be able to see. Oh, sorry. Yes, save it. Control S, save it, and Control X. Oh, what is happening here? Okay, press enter. Yeah. So now we have saved it. Now, if you try to check this cat names.txt file, you will be able to see these are the files. Now, if I try to use this sort command, so sort names.txt file. Now you will be able to see that Alice has be, has came first. Why? Because A is at the top. So now these files will the, it will not change the contents of the file. Just it the output will be changed. The, but the content will be remain as it is only. So that is one thing which you need to understand. So here Alice and these all the things has been sorted. Now in the same scenario, I will try to uh, format the numeric also so sort scores dot text and if i try to press enter sorry not so we don't have anything right so let's try to create this file nano and i am creating this file so here i will give 10 5 25 3 comma 1 so like this i will give 3 1 and control s save it and control x exit now here if i try to check the scores.txt file you will be able to see like this now if i try to sort scores.txt file now let's see what will happen 
see here if you try to see here 3 and 5 has moved to the down okay so 3 has moved, 5 has moved to the down 25 10 has came to the up and this sorting is not in a correct manner and i will try to show you in a simple way yeah here the sorting is not in a correct manner why because so it will try to sort it by default alphabetically i told you right so over here one is less and the first line first first character it will try to take it one one okay so both are less so it will try to keep it here and two three like this it will try to keep it but in order to sort this one numerically means so you need to provide an option that is nothing but hyphen n okay hyphen n means then it is it will be sorted numerically so that is one thing you need to understand in the sorting thing so this is hyphen n and also you can also use the hyphen r option also so here you can provide this hyphen r option also so like this then it will be sorted you know, reversely so this is one thing which i want to tell you and advanced sorting is also available in this one for example if you are having a multiple lines in this one and if you want to sort it with it means so then we can also use this option so i will try to tell you so let's clear it out and here i will create nano uh, data.csv file okay and here i can create like this and let's say that i am having a john and i will give the smith and here i will give 30 okay and another one is sarah johnson anything any names so here i can give 10 and uh, another one is peter williams so this is some kind of data which we are having like this let's say show it is not writing one second sorry my keyboard got stuck let's remove these all things yeah now here i will try to do control a control a control s and control x now if you try to see this data data.csv and you'll be able to see john smith and 30 sarah johnson and peter williams okay so these are the lines we are having now if you want to sort it so you can sort it sort data dot csv okay and it will be sorted according to the here like this so john peter sarah so these according to the first characters it will try to sort but i want to sort it according to the smith williams and johnson so the second lines it will be it need to be sorted so then what i need to do is sort hyphen k and you need to mention the column which column you want to use sort it and here here you need to mention the file name that's it so now if you try to see here so now this time Johnson, Smith and Williams. So the second column has been sorted. And if you want to mention the delimiter also, you can mention it that the delimiter is nothing but hyphen T comma. If you die, if you have another thing means, so you can mention it like this also delimiter also, you can mention it, not a problem. And if I want to sort it with the, with uh, the third column means what I need to mention it is. So here you need to tell it, it's a third column. Now, if you try to write it here, 10, 15 and 30. So here you'll be able to see that it has been sorted. Now you can also mention that it's a numeric sort if it is not having means hyphen n also you can mention it not a problem. So like this you can use the different options in the sort command to in order to sort the file. So if you are having a complex data or something like this with a pattern so you can use hyphen k option which denotes the uh, columns and all those things and hyphen t delimiter and you can mention this one. So this is all about the sort command that is available in the Linux. So we will learn more about this one uh, in the upcoming videos and all those things. And if you want to check more about this one means you can use the man sort command and the manual here you'll be able to see all the options that has been given for this one. Okay, hyphen or reverse we have learned it. So like this you'll be able to see hyphen k key. So you will be mentioning the location and the thing. Okay, and here you will be able to see a field separator. So that is nothing. So this is all about the sort command. Hope you understood about this concept. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. In this video, I will try to explain you about the important concept, another concept in the Linux that is about the standard input, standard output and also the standard error. So what, what are these two things? So if you try to check if I try to open this notepad, let's go to the notepad. So we will try to learn about the three things that is nothing but standard input and also the standard 
standard output and the last one is the standard uh, forget about the spellings and all those things so just i want to explain you about this one so in computing standard input standard output and the standard error often abbreviated as so something like this stdin standard in and std o u i t out and here this one will be std err so these are the so often abbreviated as like this are three predefined communication channels that programs use to interact with their environment these channels are essentially data streams that allow programs to receive input produce the output and also send the error messages so let's try to learn one by one each first one is the standard input so this is the channel where the program receives its data so here let's say that the, here right now it's not a program let's say it's a command where the command receives its data by default the standard input it is typically connected to the keyboard so through the keyboard we will give the command command or other thing meaning you type the information that the program reads and process however standard input can be redirected to come from a file instead so that means the default one will be a keyboard but if you want you can redirect that one to come from a file also we will try to see that one so this will be mostly useful or mostly will be coming when we try to learn about the pipes concept so that one we will learn it in the upcoming videos then you will be able to understand it very easily and the another one is the standard output so the standard output this is where a program writes its intended output by default it goes to the screen console or the terminal so right now we are writing that command and the command the output writes it on the screen only where you see the results of commands or program execution similar to the standard input standard output also can be redirected to a file to capture the output instead of outputting the data in the console we can also write that output into a file so the last one is the standard error this cha channel is specifically for the error messages and the diagnostic information generated by the program by default standard error go also goes to the screen so if you have any error or anything means it comes to the screen but often mixed with the standard output this can be inconvenient when you need to distinguish between the program's actual output and any errors that might occur standard error also can be redirected to a separate file for logging purposes so that's thing so key points to remember is these streams are predefined and available to most programs by default they can be redirected redirected to change where data comes from in or goes out this is especially useful in shell scripting for automating tasks and capturing the program output while standard output and standard error often appear on the screen together they are separate channels so this is what about the standard input standard output and the standard error so i will try to explain you each one how we can use it the first one which i want to explain you is the standard output why why because standard input we can understand very easily when we are trying to learn about the pipes and all those things so in linux standard output or the standard out for short we'll say it as so is where commands by default send their results right i told you this is typically your terminal screen where you see the information after running a command so here what i will try to do it is for example let's say that i am in the desktop or otherwise we are in the to do list so typically what we will try to do so whenever we want to see the command or something like ls hyphen l so this is the command which we are trying to see now the standard output the output by default it is outputting on the screen so that means i am able to see it in the thing so linux offers a way to redirect the standard output using the greater than symbol for example let's say that I, if i use this one ls hyphen l ls hyphen l and instead of outputting that in the screen i want to output that in the file so that means i can use a greater than symbol and here i can write something like uh, screen.txt anything so whatever the file you want you can write it now if you try to see here if i press enter now if you see here ls you will be able to see the screen.txt and if i try to check the screen.txt file now you will be able to see the output so whatever the output we are able to see we have written in the file now for example let's say that we are having a today state so this is the today state and i instead of outputting this one on the screen i want to save it in the file the same file so what can i do here so i can write something like date okay instead of writing that output on the screen 
so i want to write it on the screen.txt file that's it now if you try to see the screen.txt file now if you try to see see now we are able to see the date if you try to observe carefully already the screen.txt file has the ls data but the ls data has already it has been overridden and only the date is appearing so this should not happen so for example if you have a scenario so that means you need to understand that the greater than symbol always it will override the existing data and it will write the new data for example let's say that i am having a n cal so this is the cal calendar right so instead of outputting i want to write it in the screen.txt so you know that already the date is there now if you try to check the screen.txt and if you try to see only the calendar data we are able to see so that means the previous data has been overridden so we should not overridden the data it should append instead of it should be appended so for that one what we need to do it is so i will clear it out for that what we need to do is so right now we are having the in the screen the calendar right so the calendar we are having and i am writing the date so for example let's say that i want to have a date which should be written in the screen.txt now automatically it will be overridden if you try to see here it will be overridden now again i want to write the date data but it should not be overridden it should be appended then i need to use the double greater than now if you try to press enter so if you try to see the cat see this time two are there so this is how we can append the operators so here is how these operators actually these things will work the greater than operator reader is the standard output to a command file this creates a new file if it doesn't exist or overrides the existing content of the file so that is one thing and greater than greater than operator also redirects the standard output but it appends the information to an existing file instead of overriding it so that is the main difference between so the addition the additional points you need to remember is you can use these operators with any command that produces the output be conscious with the greater than as it overrides the existing file greater than greater than is useful for maintaining logs or accumulating data over time so that's that's what about this one and we have an another option that is nothing but standard error so what is this standard error so now for example let's say that i am having an ls and i want to do something like hyphen z now you are able to see this invalid option hyphen hyphen z so that means ls doesn't have an option z so that means it is throwing an error so this is a standard error instead of outputting this one to the screen i want to save it in one file so what can i do here so here ls hyphen z and instead of having this greater than screen.txt so that means what it will try to do here so greater than screen.txt means only the output the successful output will be outputted to this one so for example here if i try to do hyphen z okay hyphen z if i try to do hyphen z then what will happen still the out still the error we are able to see it but this time instead of outputting the error into the screen i want to save it in the file so for this one what you need to do it is so you need to write two option here okay so here you need to write the sorry two option so two greater than means so now the error if any error is there means it will be outputted to the file so now if you try to see the cat screen.txt then you will be able to see that option now if you want to append the data means then you need to use two greater than symbols so that is the main thing so here this is how we will be writing the standard error into a file instead of writing it in the screen so these are the options which you will be able to see so for the standard input what we will try to do it is we will be using the less than symbol which we will try to see it in the pipes concept and all those things i will try to explain you so this is what so almost all the for all the commands you can use this thing greater than symbol or greater than greater than symbol so like this you can use it for example let's say that you are having ls hyphen l option and i want to write the output in the output.txt file and also the error also should be written in the output.txt file only so you can write it like this so it's not a problem so now you can write it like this so that and if you try to see the output for the cat output.txt okay so the output will be coming and also the error also will come so if you are having something like this option means so then what you can do it is so here so we can uh, we can write it something like if you are having this output.txt for both of the these means so you can write something like instead of writing output.txt multiple times you can write ampersand one okay ampersand one so this is a shortcut which you can write it directly 
and if you are having the both the things like this means then also you can use an another option that is nothing but uh, what i want to tell you is so um, so we can also write in a such a way that ls hyphen 1 and uh, so i didn't remember exactly and here greater than am percent greater than i think i didn't remember exactly so we can also write it like this now if you try to see the output so for example um, if you want to append it means you can append it like this so for example i will use it append it like this and here i will write the hyphen z option now if i try to see the output cat output.txt file now here you will be able to see the error now for example now for example the same thing instead of this one and i feel i will use hyphen la option and i will press enter now if you try to see the output see it is appended so this is how the shortcut forms and all those things also we will be using so this is this is this is what about the redirection about the standard output and the standard error how we can redirect instead of displaying it in the screen how we can do it in the file so this is what about the standard input standard output and the standard error in the linux hope you understood about this concept so if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela web dev in this video we will learn about the one of the important concept in the linux that is about the piping so what is this piping the piping is normally we represent it with then using a vertical bar symbol that is like this so in the line action is a powerful mechanism that lets you seamlessly redirect the output of one command to the input of another command so we have learned about this input command something like so if you try to give this uh, cat uh, let's say that um, ls so here if you want to see cat less than shopping list dot txt file so now it will give you this one so less than symbol means so this is an standard input so now here we are sending the input to this cat that is nothing but the, the content of the shopping lot list dot txt file so the same like this only so now the command the input the output of one command we can pass it to the pass it as an input to the another command using the pipe symbol think of it like a connecting a chain of commands where the output of each becomes the input for the next so that is the main thing i will try to show you some simple examples we using this piping symbol so but you need to understand that so the command of the first the the output of the first command will go as an input of the second command and the input of the second command will go to the third command like this it will go on to the like this the chaining will be happening this is called as a piping so what is the use of this piping first one is the efficiency instead of saving intermediate results in the temporary files pipes streamlines the process by allowing the direct data flow and the another one is the flexibility you can creatively combine various commands to achieve complex tasks that individual commands cannot handle alone and the last one is the modularity breaking down large problems into smaller easier to manage the steps improving code readability and maintainability so these are the different ways these are the different things how, how why piping is useful so i will try to show you some simple examples of this one so for example let's say that <coughs> let's say that i will be clearing this one all so here if i want to see the list of all the running process in the linux means so we will be using ps aux then it will give you all the current running process and in this process if you want to search for a particular or if you filter the output of particular word means then what you can do it is ps aux grep i will try to explain you about this grep command also just i am trying to show you so here what it is trying to do it is so for example let's clear it off let's clear it off this one all yeah ps aux and grep firefox okay i am trying to check the firefox process so here the here so ps aux will give you all the output of all the current running process and this output will be passed as the input to this one and in this grep it will try to search for the word firefox if i try to press enter so it will give you the result for this one so if i try to press enter let's press the enter yeah it will search it will give you only the firefox so this is a grep command and this psasx these are all the commands which we have learned which we haven't learned it earlier so let's try to go back to our old thing which we have learned the commands so now i will try to show you um, for example let's say that cat sample.txt file okay so this one is having line 1 line 2 line 3 right so these are the things which we are having 
and now i want to calculate i want to um, count the number of words that are available so that means 1 2 3 4 5 6 so i want to count the number of words available in this one so what i can do here so normally wc hyphen w so we can have it something like wc hyphen w let's try to write it w c hyphen w and i can write sample dot txt file and i can check it so here like this we can able to get it but this sample dot txt file the contents i want to so instead of sending the file the contents of the file i can pass it through the cat command so that means what i can do it is so let's try to clear it off and i will try to make it bigger yeah so control l it will clear it off cat sample dot txt file and pipe symbol and the output of the sample dot txt file i am sending it to the input for this wc hyphen w now if you try to see the no total number of count we are able to get it as this one is a simple example so if you try to see the bigger ones and all those things so you can able to achieve it very easily so cat displays the file content and wc hyphen w means counts the number of words in the input so that is one thing i will try to show you one bigger concept so for example let's say that hyphen ls hyphen l is there so here we are able to see this uh, number of files right so we are able to see at the top total and also we are able to see these all the things now what i want to do it is so i want to count the total number of lines available in this one so for example if i try to see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 11 is there including the total so this total also will be count comment so without total means total of 10 is there so let's try to see so ls hyphen l and i want to count wc hyphen l sorry uh, yeah hyphen l means it will give you the total number of lines if you try to see here total we are getting 11 right but i want to uh, i don't want to count this total why because so there are only actually 10 files or folders available in this uh, to do thing so here we are getting 11 right because the total is also there because the ls hyphen l is giving the output of this total thing and that L and that wc is is counting including the total thing if i don't want to get that one means so we have an, another option that is nothing but ls hyphen 1 if you try to press enter so you we are able to get only the count like this or otherwise you can also do something like only ls also so we are able to get only the lines so here we are not getting the lines right so if you want to get it as a lines means then you can do ls hyphen 1 instead of using the thing so now let's clear it off so ls hyphen 1 and i will pass it to the wc hyphen l now if you will be able to get 10 only so in this way we can we can send the output of this command to the input of this wc so for example let's say that we are having slash user slash bin so this one is the thing which will be having so many lines will be there so for this one so what we can do it is so here for this one what we can do it is so if you try to see here ls hyphen l means so it is trying to give you so here ls hyphen user slash bin so we are able to see lot many files right i want to count this total files or folders available in this one so what can i do here for this one so we know that ls hyphen 1 slash user slash bin if you try to see here we are able to get all the lines like this and for this one what i can do it is so i can pass it to the wc hyphen l sorry hyphen l now it will give you the total number of files or folders available in this one is 1472 and if you want to come combine with along with the hidden files and all those things means then you can use something like hyphen a and here you will be able to get 14 sound for so that means two more files are there that is hidden files so like this we can able to pass the output of the command into the input so we'll try to learn more about this piping thing so just i am explaining you the concept so the another example which i want to explain you about this one is the another concept also we can use it something like history so if you want to get the history you will be able to see all the uh, commands that i have typed in this linux thing so we can also use something like history and if you want to uh, sort it out so you can pass it something like sort and these all the things will be sorted and if you want to get only the unique means so you can add, add this one so that the duplicate lines will be removed and if you want to know the count of this one all means so you can pass something like wc hyphen l total number of lines you will be able to get it so like this you can pass the output of command to the input so that we can get the exact thing so this is what about i want to explain you about the piping concept so the pipe symbol is what establishes the connection between the commands 
piping works primarily with the text based data only these are the key points you need to understand it allows for remarkably creative and powerful command line operations and another one i want to tell you is so the de redirection thing also so there is a difference between the redirection thing for example cat sample.txt file if you try to see here we will be able to get it right and here if you try to use the greater than symbol this one so this one will write it in the file okay so this one writes in the file so if you try to see cat list.txt means then you will be able to see the content of this one so redirection greater than means it will write the output of this one into a file whereas the pipe means it will not write the output into a file the output will be sent as an input to the command so that is what the difference between greater than and the pipe symbol you need to understand so hope you understood about this pipe symbol and the difference between this greater than and also the pipe symbol if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela web dev so in this video we will learn about the another important concept that is nothing but about the tr command okay so what is this tr command so we have learned about, we are learning about the pipings and all those things right so in this piping only i want to explain you about another important uh, command which i have forgotten that is about the tr command tr command the full form for this one is uh, the short uh, the full form is translate so the short uh, notation is the tr it is a powerful command line utility used for character level text manipulation so that means if you want to manipulate any or translate any character or anything means then we will be using this tr command so its core functions are first one is the character translation so that means it will replace the characters in a stream of text with other characters and also a character deletion so if you want to delete any character from that one means remove specific characters from a text stream means then it will try to remove it so i will try to show you some typical examples so here the tr typically works with the standard input and the standard output so that means you can use the pipes and the redirection like less than or greater than to work with the files so now first one is so i told you right about the replacement thing for example let's say that i am having echo and here uh, let's say that hello world so echo means what it will try to do it will try to show you it will try to display the text whatever it is having now what i want to do it is now what i want to tell is so here uh, i want to convert this hello world to the capital letters so that means the entire hello world should be converted into a capital letter so what can you do here so for this one i can do echo hello world okay so this is the thing and i can use the pipe symbol and translate a to z or otherwise for example let's say that uh, we are having the l right so the l word should be replaced with k so that is the thing so if i try to press enter so here oh sorry the echo is wrong right so echo so here you'll be able to see that all the l character has been transformed to the k so that means here the first one is the what is the character i want to change it and to which character i want to change it so like this we need we'll be using this command so not only the single character we can also provide the stream of characters also for example let's say that i want to convert i have all the uh, hello world all the characters to a capital letter so that means what i can do here i can provide a to z to a to z like this okay so now if it tries press enter so now here everything the character has been converted into a uppercase letter so that is one thing not only like this we can also replace the spaces uh, using a uh, with a, some delimiter also we can use it for example i want to convert these spaces into an underscore means then what can you do it is for example let's say that echo this is a sentence so this is the thing we are having now i want to uh, replace the spaces with underscore so that means i can use the tr and here the space should be converted to a underscore that's it so now here you'll be able to see that this underscore is underscore a underscore sentence so like this we can use the translate command to convert or to change the data so now not only this one so which uh, uh, not only with this one so we can also delete the specific characters also so if you want to delete the specific character means we can also delete it for example let's say that echo hello one two three world is there okay and i want to delete the digits so i want to delete the digits means one two three so what can i do here i can use a pipe symbol tr and here hyphen d so i want to delete zero to nine so this is the range of characters now you can Hmm, what it is happening so tr hyphen d 0 to 9 oh sorry that's my mistake 
so here I need to use a double quotes I forgot to keep the double quotes yeah now we are able to see that the one two three has been deleted so like this we can also delete a specific characters also so that means here you need to understand that you can replace the or you can transform or translate the characters or otherwise you can delete the characters also so not only this one you can also um, squeeze the repeated characters for example let's say that uh, I am having a echo uh, many I am having like the spaces so I am having more than one spaces so for this one I don't want to delete the spaces I want to squeeze the spaces means then what can I do it is so here tr hyphen s so squeeze it and the space I want to do it so here you know you will be able to see that only one space is there so if you are having multiple spaces means it will be squeezed into single one so like this you will be able to see and not only this one we can also use the character classes for this one to re rename this tr thing so for example let's say that in character classes means um, echo echo and here I am having h e l l o okay w o r l d like this we are having and I want to convert all this uh, lowercase and all those things to uppercase means then what can I do it is so here what we can do it is so now we can use characters classes so something like here okay all the lower sorry all the lower like this we can use these are called as in character class and it should be converted to upper sorry and here I need to use something like this one oh sorry not that one so this is the mistake I am using now if you try to see see entire things will be converted into an uppercase letter so like this we can also use the character character what I want to tell is the character uh, uh, what is it the characters things also we can do it so not only like this so, so you will be having characters as lower upper digit space so like these different types we will be able to have and up to now what I have shown you is uh, I have shown you with uh, what I want to say is echo ring right not only like this we can also apply this one to the file also for example let's say so for example let's say that we are applying this tr command let's clear it out and uh, here which we are having let's say sample.txt cat sample.txt what is the content we are having so like this we are having it right so first what I want to do it is so here I want to convert a to z okay to a to z so now I have converted to this one so now here I can save it in um, file underscore uppercase dot txt so I can save it in one file so automatically the content will be saved so for example if you try to see sample dot txt doesn't change any data and if you try to see this <coughs> file underscore uppercase so file underscore uppercase if you try to see so the converted data or the translated data will be saved in this file so this is how you can also use it like this so not only with the echo thing we can also use it with the cat also we can implement this tr command so this is how we can do it i will try before closing this one i will show you one simple example so that is nothing but for example let's say that uh, we are having some data.txt file okay and in this one i am having some phone numbers let's assume that leela one two three four five six seven like this and we are having another guy something like david okay and here i will try to show it something like this and i will have martin and he is, has some phone numbers like this so now i will save it and i will exit it and if you try to see this data.txt and here we are able to see this data now what i want to do is i want to extract only the phone number from this one and i want to save it in the file so how can i do it this one for example let's say that cat data.txt and here what i want to do it is so tr and i want to remove this uh, what i want to do it is i want to remove hyphen d and what i want to do a to z so i will remove these all the files now if you try to see here only the these all the things has been removed instead of this one we can use uh, our uh, character classes that is nothing but alpha alpha means whether it is a lowercase or uppercase everything will be removed and now we are having only the colon so we can remove this colon and again i need, i can pass the pipe symbol so that that output will be passed as an input to that one and again i can use another one and here i will try to remove this colon so now if you try to see colon has been removed and if you want to remove that space also so again you can use one tr tr 
hyphen D and here you can use the character class that is nothing but space or blank anything so like this you can use it now if I try to press enter so this is the thing and here I can save it in the phones.txt so like this we can extract or translate or transform the data and we can save it now if you try to see the cat data.txt that it, sorry cat data.txt the file will be like this only so the code the data doesn't change in this file but if you try to see cat phones.txt now the phone numbers has been extracted so in this way by using this translate or the tr command so we can do the, the uh, like these things so hope you understood about this one with the simple examples i have shown you if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela webdev in this video we will learn how we can work with the multiple pipes so that means if you are having uh, multiple commands and all those things means if you want to use it with the multiple pipes how we can use it i will try to show you with a simple example so that you can have you can have a clear understanding about this one so for example let's say that let's go to the ls slash uh, where i want yeah here let's go here ls slash user slash bin if i try to show this is the all the entire data which we are having now if i want to show it ls hyphen l slash user slash bin if you try to see so this is the data we are able to see it and here this is the permissions which we will try to learn about this one and this is the group and the one these are all things we will learn in the future videos and this is the total number of size we are having and this is all the number of uh, bytes it is occupying right so if you want to get it in a human readable manner then you can have something like option lh then you will be able to see to 1.7k 27k m like this we are able to do it now what I want to do with this one, so this all the data and all those things I want to now we need to do in a such a way that in this folder user slash bin folder we are having this all the list of all the data and I want to extract the top three maximum size folders or files I want to extract it. So how can I do it? Let's try to see. So first I want to when I do this one. So what I want to do it is so I want to sort the data, right? So I got the entire thing. I want to sort it so to how i can sort it sort it with with this one right so now that means one two one two three four five so the fifth column fifth column means we can provide it using an option that is hyphen k so that means i will use the pipe symbol sort hyphen k and the option i need to give it is the five right so that is the thing sort hyphen k and the five option so now if i try to press enter so here we are able to see that hyphen k f so here we are able to see so this is not coming in a zigzag manner so the data is coming in a zigzag manner so it is not coming in a formatted way why because so here you are having 59k and 5 so we are having some k and we are able to see some m here like these things we are having it right so that means we need to format it in a human readable format so that means we have an option in such a way that hyphen h h is a human readable so we can use hyphen n but those are not numbers so that is the reason human readable format now if i try to press enter so now you'll be able to see 24 16 9.9 .9. so now the megabytes are coming like this but here the last ones are getting like this right so the last ones are getting at the bottom what i want to do here so i want to reverse these all things so if i want to reverse these all things means you can use hyphen r automatically so the least memory occupied the least size files came at the bottom the maximum size will come at the top now what i want to do it is i want to take only the top that is nothing but head hyphen 3 so the top 3 so these are the top 3 24 16.9.9 m so these are the top uh, occupied or the top memory size files so now for example let's say that if you don't want to use the reverse means then what you can do it here so here what you can do it is i will try to show you ls so let's try to write it so if you want to do it means so in the same scenario you can use it instead of doing it reverse so we can remove this reverse okay and i can use this tail instead of using this one i can use the tail so that means you will get 9.19 9.9 .9, 16 and 24 so in the reverse order you will be able to get it so anyway is okay fine so this is how you can get it 
so now you will be able to see that we have worked with the multiple pipe options so you not only using this one we can also have an another option that is nothing but using the disk usage du okay du disk usage so using this du also you can able to get it so if you want to check this disk usage du so here estimates the file space usage so here you can pass whatever the things you want you can pass it hyphen h means human readable format so now let's try to see that one <coughs> so if you try to uh, clear this one control x sorry q q for quit right yeah so now what i want to do it is du hyphen h now here you will be able to see this 56a right so now here these are the files which you are able to see that one so what i want to do here uh, hyphen user slash bin i want to get this one so now here you will be able to see 202 mb like this here right so i want to show i want to see all the files hyphen he now here you will be able to see all the files and this one is the 202 mb is the file which is showing user slash bin directory i don't want this directory so first what i want to do it is so let's try to take it du hyphen h and i want to sort it sort it uh, so what is that one so sort it right sort it so here uh, hyphen uh, or otherwise uh, what we can do it is so what i can do it is so here i can sort it with a human readable format now here we are able to get this human readable format and now what i can do i can get the last one so there is nothing but tail hyphen minus three so these are the files which we can able to get it so let's try to so these are the files but here we are able to see that we are getting 202 mb right so we should not get that one why because it is giving you the complete folder memory space so what we can do it is i can re i can take the four and i can take the top three now these are the files which we are able to see now if you try to see the ls also the ls which we have worked on this one so this one is also the same thing only so we are able to see the gdb snap and all those things and here also the same things we are able to see so that means so the du using this one also we can able to get it and using this one also we are able to get it so this is how we can work with the multiple pipes so this is what i want to explain you so we can also work with the multiple pipes and this is how we will be doing it and what we have did it ls hyphen lh so we have used the option lh lh h means readable format l means long format it will try to show you and user bin and we have sorted it and we have take the tail command so this is how we will be working with the multiple uh, pipes thing so this is what about i want to explain you so if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys before closing this topic i want to explain you one smaller concept that is nothing but about the t command so what is this t command about this one so the t command is also one of the important one which you need to understand it so the t command acts as something like a pipeline for example if i want to explain you in a something like for example let's take this one and here is my yeah control f or otherwise file new don't save it so normally the pipes we have learned about the pipes concept right so normally when you are trying to command when you are trying to send one command into the pipe okay pipe let's assume this one is a pipe okay and the output of this one will be sent as a command to this one okay so like this now in between this one you want to do some other operation means so we can use this t command so where this exactly this t command will be exactly useful is i will try to show you one simple example let's assume that here we are having this simple thing right so let's try to take the ls thing I am having two things that is nothing but sample.txt shopping list.txt okay so I want to check this sample sample.txt and shopping list.txt file so these are the files now what I want to do it is so here I want to count the lines of this one so here you will be able to get that there are nine lines for this one so total total lines for these two files combinedly is nine lines so fine now what i want to do is so i want to combine these two files and i want to save this content in a separate file and i want to calculate the total number of lines for this one so what i can do for this one is i want to change this one so here cat sample.txt and the shopping list.txt so i want to save it in common.txt file okay common.txt file 
and then I want to calculate the WC hyphen L. This is the common thing which we have learned it, right? So first what I am trying to do, I want to check these two files that is nothing but shopping list and uh, sample.txt file and I want to save it in a one file common.txt and I want to check this WC hyphen L. So if I try to press enter, so now we are able to see it is a zero. Why we are getting zero? But we should get the output as nine. We are getting it as in zero. Why? Because so here, so what it has did it here. So something like so. For example, if you try to see the same thing with the WC, so here we are able to see zero zero zero. So what it is happening is so sample dot txt uh, shopping list dot txt and it has saved on the file and it has written nothing and that one it is calculated in the WC. So now in this behavior, so what it is happening here is. So we are trying to use this redirection option and we are saving it file and after that one the output of this redirection option we are saving it in the WC. So we are trying to see it with the WC. This, this is not the behavior. So in this scenario the T command plays a very important role. What is this T command as it is? So the same thing you can do it. So you need to cat this one and here you, you can use this T command. Okay. T common.txt so whatever the output it comes whatever the output it comes it will save it in the file common.txt and it will not modify the output the same output will be sent to the WC now if you try to see the same thing or uh, or otherwise before using this T command so what you can think it is um, so you may be thinking that so okay fine shopping list.txt and I want to see the WC of this one and then afterwards I will save it in the common.txt so you can think it like this so now if you try to see here cat common.txt file now you are able to see 9, 17, 18 instead of the contents instead of the contents of these two files so we are able to see the WC output so what it is happening here so the two files it is taking the output and WC we are trying to count the word count and that output of this word count we are trying to save it in the file so this should not happen so this is the different behavior so that is the reason the T command take, takes place. The T command will try to save this file, save the content into a file, and the same content will be passed to the output as a next file. So for that one, what we need to do it is so in the same thing. So we can remove it like this, and so here I can do T. Uh, let's try to do it. Yeah, T common dot txt file. So that means automatically the data will be saved, and here the pipe I can use it, and here I can use the WC. Now if I try to press enter, see we are able to see the total number of things and if you try to see the output for this one, common.txt and the same content we are able to see it that both the content has been copied. So here the T command, what is the meaning of this T command is, so whatever the output it is, whatever the output it is coming, it will save that output into the file and the same output without modifying it will pass it to the next file. So this is the importance of this T command. So this is one command which I have missed it. So hope you understood about this T command. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.